Welcome to the OSRS podcast, where we talk to RuneScape content creators about RuneScape content. I am Mint Mad Cow, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, boys? Rex as always. And hello, it's me, Rex Cove. And today we have Mr. Cold One again, but it's been a long time. So, Mr. Cold One, if you didn't know, is legendary for his solo TOBs. He pushed it to the limits and soloed it on the first ever hardcore Iron Man account to do so. And he's going to do that again in the near future, but... How are you doing, Mr. Cold One? I'm just working on my Iron Man, doing, like, you know, episode 840 on my YouTube series. Just got, like, my 50th Arcane Prayer Scroll, you know. It's yeah. just now, another day. We were talking off stream, and you had a really good intro for your, your video. Could you give us a run back of that real quick? That, that is the intro. No, it was a little different last time. I don't know. More, <laughs> more, more uh, you know, more enthusiasm. Yeah, Welcome all- back to episode 949 of my <laughs> Iron Man series, where Chambers is there killing this old man. Old man, we got a purple. We're going to milk it for one minute. But first, Raid Shadow Legends. You know, I don't know if you and anybody heard about this game. And our purple is, oh, it's Arcane First Goal number 90, man. Yeah, I'm never getting this beautiful. people. That's I'm telling you, people to watch. <laughs> and uh, before we get into the content, we don't have a like goal, but the dislike of a button is gone. So you might as well just help us hit a thousand likes on our first podcast back in like almost a month. Uh, and then maybe next video we'll have a like goal, right? You know what? Thousand likes on this video. Next video, we get a like goal. Uh, how do you like that right <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Dude, I think, I think that's a great idea. But yeah, how do yeah. you guys feel about the dislike button being gone, by the way? Uh, it's, it's weird. weird. It's weird. That, that's all I got to say. I don't, I don't really know. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Because now yeah. Rebecca Black's Friday music video is actually good because there's no dislikes. Yeah, no one knows what's bad anymore. Yeah, there's, based on honestly, it's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, I was just gonna say there's there's honestly a lot I I could say about YouTube and the way they're running their platform and how they are legit. Just, I mean, if you watch some of those YouTube rewinds with ten to twenty mil dislikes, right? Those are gone now. <clears throat> it's only likes on YouTube rewind. It's only likes on everything now. There's no dislikes. There's uh, I think the 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 lady who uh, controls YouTube, I can't remember her name, won like a, a award for like non censorship, like freedom of speech, which is hilarious, right? And maybe yeah. one day we could have a podcast where we just talk about what direction YouTube's going. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with rules. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's YouTube. Yeah, so we're on YouTube, and there are a lot of big things happening. So maybe we should possibly in the future cover uh, just maybe yeah. a YouTube uh, podcast on where we might be going. But today's um, today's main topic, though, is going to be uh, mostly mm-hmm. about the theme of, obviously, new gear versus old gear. Is there is there this inevitableness to the fact that stronger gear coming out will devalue old gear? Or is there always a niche that we can find to balance them all out? So the main thing right now is the Torva armor coming out with next and just next update in general, bring out a few other items. But Torva is like the most notorious one, a lot of... People are feeling like it'll just completely destroy the melee ecosystem. Like Bandos and Inquisitor might just get mm-hmm. the you know the whoop de doo and just crash in price. So we're gonna talk a bit about that. You know the next updates and its repercussions, and we'll talk about some other stuff too. Um, I think we yeah. have uh some something about a little bit of revs, like the boss coming out with it, the PJ timer, Android beta, some league stuff coming out. So we're gonna talk about those too. But well, yeah, I, I like the, the next discussion, um, but for those who didn't play back in the day, I, I know when I was playing RuneScape, uh, I didn't know anything, right, way back. So, Rice, I'm assuming you definitely know what Next is. You know what Torva is. So, could you give us a little backstory on, on what the boss is or how the armor affects your character? And, and is it going to be different in OSRS now from then? Because uh, I honestly don't know. All right. Well, Next is a boss that already existed in the original runescape so it was the fifth god wars boss and it was way stronger than the other four like bandos and stuff and like back then it was definitely end game you needed like or you ideally you wanted like all these things that we don't have now like um soul split turmoil some chaotix arguably we have better weapons now though but we had summoning as well back then so so this time around they're bringing out this boss and it's not going to be the same, right? Like, the mechanics is probably going to be different. The stats are probably going to be different. Just because we don't have the same things. And the drops are going to be different, too, this time. Because it used to drop the best in slot mage, range, and melee armor. Offensively, they were, like, the best of their class. So, you know, Torva was the best melee gear. And not only were they the best of their class, they were also the tankiest, too. And they also 
for the most part, they were the most tanky. Like Torva was also the most tanky, as well as being the most offensive. And it would also let you eat all the way to like 150 HP. Jesus. Which was insane. So you could basically never die because you can just stock up on your HP. But uh, this time around, though, they're not introducing the range armor or the mage version like uh, Virtus and Phoenix. They're only doing Torva. And Torva is only going to have the offensive stats and the defensive stats that it used to have, or very similar. It's not going to have the HP over buff, though. So, so, yeah, you're not going to be able to get to 150 like before. And yeah, it's gonna come out with a bunch of other items. Uh, I think Cold One, you you know you know those other items really well because you could talk about those if you want. Yeah, and I'm very sad they got rid of my favorite one, the Zarite Bow. That would have been so much fun for Inferno. Wouldn't the Zarite Bow kind of be like the Twisted Bow? Am I completely wrong? It was no. like a Chin Bow. Yeah. Oh, so it was like AOE. Yeah. yeah oh, I okay. Um, so the new items coming out. Yeah, Cold One, crossbow, could you yeah. list out the new items if you have my memory? Yeah, so they have, obviously, the full Torva set. Uh, they've got the Zarite crossbow now, which you need to use an Armadale crossbow one to use in the first place, so we don't devalue that item. And those things have shot up in price like crazy ever since they announced that. I think they've shot up like 10 plus mil ever since the announcement of Zarite bow. Yeah. Then we've got Zarite band braces, which is new best in slot range gloves. I think they've been pulled like two times in the past from other content. The last one I remember is being from TOB, and you had to use them on ranger gloves. In order yeah. to make them work or something weird like <laughs> so that. But now, now you enough. just like have them and they just work. Yeah. You get them as a drop. And then, of course, what's a God Wars boss without the God Sword? The uh, Zarosian God Sword. And I think they gave us like a mini buff as well, where it like does more damage and heals you for more than they initially pitched it at. Yeah. Dude, isn't there a wand? Not anymore. No? It was, oh, it's gone? It was no. like Mage Armor, but they scrapped it. No, I was, I was hearing about a wand. That they were going to add that has like a weird attack speed and it does like we oh. talked about it on the podcast before and I yeah. thought that was coming out for next. Oh uh, no, that, that's from Pyramids of Gargalon. Oh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, that's wait, from Race wait, 3. Wait. Do we know the name of Raid 3? What was that again? Pyramids of Gargalon. I don't know the real name. That's just what <laughs> we've been calling it. I was going to say, what the fuck is <laughs> Gargalon? I, I, yeah, legit, I, I legit have forgotten the real name for Raid 3 and I could not tell you what <laughs> yeah, it is. Dude, we just always Everybody say Raid 3. We just always say Raid 3. Pyramids of I think it's called like, Tomb of Amaskat or some shit, but I, but no, I prefer no. to just say Race 3. I mean, I'd rather say imagine... Pot Pog than Pot TOA. Yeah. Dude, pot can Toa. you imagine after all this hype for Race 3, and if it just ends up being like a copy past of the Cal Fight King from RuneScape 3? Uh, I, like, hope they, I hope it's in there, to be honest. Just, just, as, just to... That would be cool. That'd be cool, but yeah. Yeah, but cool. dude, talking about the crossbow that you get from Nex, so I can't remember what Nexus species is cool. It's called the, the Nihil, yeah. Nihil, that's the one. So the lore behind the crossbow, yeah. I think, is pretty cool because it's literally, it's literally like a dead Nihil that has been carved into a crossbow. Like the lore on that thing is super. Like it's too, it's totally geeky. It's Yo, cool. reminds me of the whip, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty yeah, fucked. Right, yeah, it, it's cool as hell, isn't it? Um. My question, though, real quick. Do any of you guys know off the top of your head, is the Torva armor more strength bonus than Bandos? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's way higher. How, how much more is it than Bandos? Isn't it one? Plus two. Like, yeah, I think overall it's like six over everything else. Like, the whole set. Yeah. Yeah. So we're so going to yeah, be seeing 50-50 DDSs is pretty mm. much what that guaranteed. Unless no, max. Uh, not, not quite yet. You'll see 49, maybe. I don't know exactly how You calculate. already hit 49. Well, oh, you have to, like, yeah. DBA glitch it, though, I think, right? I thought you could 47-47, not 49-49. You know, as I a think player, it was 48-48 with a DBA glitch. I have to, like, double-check it, because yeah. it's plus 6. If it was plus 8, then, yeah, you're hitting 50-50 with it. Mm -hmm. So, 48-48 sounds right, and then I think the Debo is 49-49 is what they max the damage out on. Because if you guys didn't oh. no, I know a lot of you do, but for the audience, if they didn't cap the Debo's damage, you could probably get, like, 55-50. So they had to cap it. <laughs> right, Bebo's 48 48 forever. And I, know 40, that one, yeah, you know, I, I used to avoid rush with that thing back Dude, in the day. Yo, I wish they didn't nerf it for leagues, man. It was stupid. Like, it should have hit 60 60 or something, you know? It would have been nice. That would have been funny. Yeah. Um, but speaking back on the Torva armor, so you said that you need an Armadillo bow to make the Zarite crossbow. And I think that's really cool to bring in older weapons that still have a use, but take them out of the game and make them more valuable by uh, upgrading them. And honestly, I don't understand why they didn't 
do that with Vandos to where you could just like put something on Vandos and make make it a tour you know, whatever the, the they top. yeah they are they are, are kind of doing that they are kind of doing that yeah. yeah what do you mean kind of like you can break the bandos down into the pieces to partially make the torva so you need to combine them with the with another so you drop. have to do that yeah you can't just wield it correct oh, yeah so okay. when it drops right. it drops broken everything from next as far as i'm aware will be dropped in a broken form yeah like the so torva armor next. and the bow yeah yeah Oh, so have to okay. Fix ACB or Bandos or something like that. But like the the original question, which was, will it make just a car and Bandos like obsolete? And like Inquisitor. I don't, think, I don't think so, man. Like it, they have very specific niche like uses apart from Bandos. Bandos is like widely used for everything, but also Bandos is what is it like fourteen years old as well? I feel like that's enough time where something else could come in and take the spot, right? But like just a car. As such a niche use as it is, it's like pretty much only a cold one is the kind of guy that uses just a car. Rune Dragon uh, ulting, pretty much. Or yeah, yeah. or that. But so even it's then, like, like you'd probably just be using Torva for that. Yeah. If you're rich um, enough. <laughs> oh, he then is. You've got, in, you got Inquisitor on the other hand, which is best in slot crush. So it's like it has its niche uses. I guess the only thing here that's really going to be get, getting, in a sense, put as obsolete would be bandos but there's still going to be a huge market for it because bandos is really good armor and it's at a very good price whereas torva is probably gonna be like i imagine it's i can't imagine torva being less than 100 mil per piece it's probably even going to be more than that maybe significantly more than that yeah for so a long like, time probably yeah so it, it like bandos is still going to be like that mid to late game armor that you use until you really <laughs> start killing necks and you replace those pieces so, and also the fact that you're using Bandos to fix the armor that you get from Nex, I, I don't feel like it's going to make it obsolete at all. And I also feel like enough time has passed. 14 years. Come on, boys. Some games don't even last that long for there to be Most. a replacement in melee gear. Hmm. It's like, I think it's time, personally. I, I think yeah, it's about time. I think Cole won, uh, you looked up the math behind the... The, the the difference in dps right like between the armor so if you want to elaborate on that for us yeah slightly so for things that don't really have like specified defenses like torv is just going to be overall better but for something that you need crush for like tecton nightmare or kq then inquisitor is still going to be best in slot there is was it was it so, by a, a decent margin or or is it fairly close to each other yeah it's it's by a decent margin okay inquisitor is I mean, still it, it, that's subjective as well as mm -hmm. like how far you consider it because yeah. In like terms of speed running, three seconds is a lot, but terms in casual play, three seconds is not a lot. So, no, it's just like one it's, way yeah, of measuring okay. it. Yeah, okay, it's pretty, it's it's significant enough. I I I would say, yeah. Yeah. I guess can we I can talk about price points too. Like, you know, we can talk about price points because you you know you were thinking, oh, you know, Rixie was saying, oh yeah, it's probably gonna be over a hundred mil each. But I feel like it could be way more than that, at least for like the first oh, few yeah. months, because next. I mean, I feel like next I'm is going to be like harder I'm than even saying, nightmare. So I'm only saying 100 mil because that's the Long price run. point Inquisitor is at. Yeah. But the reason that Inquisitor is at 100 mil per piece is because it's just like bot city over there. Yeah. You know, it's like if the bots start getting to next and killing it, which they are, if they can kill hard mode for Sony, I'm going to assume that they'll be able to kill next. Um, I, I just hope so next it is. All depends. I that's just how heavily bot like, it is, yeah. basically. But if you think about the actual armor, real quick, it's like, you have an armor which is super tanky, it has a mechanic which is not in old school yet, which allows your HP to go to 120 or so, like you said. Oh, no, it and does not anymore. It doesn't have that oh, anymore. So they oh, got rid they of it. Oh, did they remove that? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, that, that's actually quite good, because I feel like that's more of like a RuneScape free evolution of combat kind of way to go. If they keep it old school, I think that's actually a good shout. But still, best in slot, tanky, best damage um yeah i i don't know i think when it first comes out it's gonna be like mad prices like it'd probably be like 500 mil for the plate body or something but like when it settles down i imagine you'll probably be looking at around about maybe 700 mil for the complete set i'd imagine but i might be way off so the armor is not only tanky but as a strength bonus right is what we're saying yeah yeah Depending on the drop rate and how easy the boss is to kill, I could see this being the first armor set that just stays above a bill. Because it almost feels like the way our economy is going, 
is that there's got to be items that will keep its value no matter what. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but if it's that good, just like the Elijah, and it has strength bonus, depending on the rarity and the hardness of the boss, this could be an armor set that actually keeps its value a little better than others. Not 100% because mm. RuneScape is inflationary by nature, um, but it sounds like a really good armor set. That's just kind of yeah. what I look at is like, what's the use case of certain things? And do they outscale everything? And that armor set seems like it outscales legit. Pretty much everything. Nothing. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. everything. Like, it's like the LE outscales every shield, bulwark scales, everything in existence. You just got to look at certain alpha alpha items in RuneScape, man. You know, it's going to take over. Oh. So it could be. It could cold, be, yeah. A cold one. What are the defense stats on the uh, Torba versus just a car, if you know? Uh, I think it's like slightly lower, and it also doesn't have that like damage reduction effect if you wear the full set. Okay, Oops, missing out on that. All right, well that's I guess that still makes just a car somewhat relevant in that sense as well because the bonus effect is quite nice. But um, have they considered possibly making it so obviously when Torva gets dropped, it's broken. It needs to be repaired with the Vandal's piece. Yeah, that has, is how it is. Has anybody suggested maybe it's like to fix like the repairable? Oh god! You well, I, I was thinking you have to like fix it with maybe a just a car plate body and a Bandos chest plate because it not only has the offensive but it has the tankiness aspect to it as well. Like because it's not just one or other; it, it's like both, right? It's like both sets tied into one package. You know, I don't think RuneScape could add this in because it seems a little too high tech. But what if it is like how much damage versus how much uh, you've tanked on your armor, and it's like if you need. Uh, if you've been hitting a lot with it, then maybe you need more bandos. And if you've been tanking a lot more with it, maybe you need just a shot. I, I think that's completely out of out of the loop, but uh, that'd be cool. I don't know, man. Just like a little, uh, it would really balance out the armors in game. But there's just no way they could implement that, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I wonder how they're gonna do it, Vandos, anyways. But I, I feel like because it's an armor which ties both of those classes in, just a car and Vandos. It kind of makes sense that you'd have to sacrifice both sets. I mean, for me personally, I've always liked just a car, but it's also been one of those like armor sets which has just felt so useless for such a long time. Like you just, it, it's got even smaller of a niche of uses than Inquisitor does. You know what I mean? Like it's barely used for anything. So mm -hmm. I guess it would be nice to see the price of it go up and it to be like Tob is one of the, like the end game pieces of content. Like when you get just a car at this point. It sucks. Like it's 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 just like so bad. It's like oh my god, just a card chase card. It's like why, you know. Although saying mm -hmm. that everything there is super cheap anyways, but I guess it'd be nice to see it have a use. I mean, for for just a card, I gotta ask a cold one. Where where does this work best? You were saying something earlier, but I didn't catch it. Where where does it work best with the damage reduction? Where you like either need it or it's like it's it works well when you use it. If you're alting, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Or if you're trying so, to cheese an infernal cape. So yeah. cheese infernal cape, which I feel like Torva may be even better for cheesing. I'm not too it's sure not. yet. No, just because of no. the damage reduction, right? Yeah, what are you um, gonna need the melee stats for? Yeah, you don't actually melee True. stuff in the inferno usually. Well, I've seen people, I just wouldn't recommend it's it. It's for healing, <laughs> you know, for yeah, for healing. And that's stuff. something I actually didn't consider because with how bulwark works now, where it gets more max hits based on your defensive stats. So Torva might be better for that, just because of the plus, like what is it, plus eighteen? And you like, put like a blood fury on, on, right? You can and kill you, like, things with the, the book. Yeah, with the There's shield. some really stupid method where huh. you take in Sarah God Sword, just because you're a blood fury, a bulwark, and you just melee everything, and you're on the thrall book or whatever, and you're just getting spec back like crazy. And you just pretty mage and tank it all, sit behind the pillars, and it's like a 12 hour cape. Jeez. Wait, what? Are you for yeah. real? Yeah, I'm dead serious. Yeah, but wait, hold up. <laughs> you can still mess up at Zuck. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, you have to range it. So of course, what's the yeah. point in spending twelve hours getting to Zuck if you're just gonna fuck it up anyways? If you suck at the waves, then yeah, that's your way to get through it. Yeah, or some you people don't really like stuck the waves to get good at them. Uh, I guess it's yeah. a use I, case. I, I had a different approach, but yeah, okay. It's a use. Yeah, yeah, they just haven't done a good a good job in in terms of making tank armor really useful. To be honest. And I know we're not at the Raids 3 topic yet, and I don't plan to get there, but just talking about tank armor really makes me think that Raids 3 will have something to do with the tank role. And yeah, just very they, really, they really need to make the armor with a lot of defenses just shine more, so they just haven't yeah, introduced yeah. many mechanics that really 
make that work because right now most things are dps focused like you know yeah more more damage better usually so but um i kind of want to jump back because i don't want to get right into rage 3 yet even though it is exciting i want to jump back to like will it devalue bandos and inquisitor and uh I, sorry viewers it's first podcast back i didn't do a lot of research on next next time i next time i will do more research on work covering i kind of expected rice and a cold one and right to kind of uh take me along here but it does seem like value like bandos and inquisitor won't get devalued if it's getting burned constantly right well inquisitor's not getting burned but the bandos no, oh will. just bandos yeah, yeah bandos okay so it that seems like bandos so Bandos is a niche case for people with like 100, 200 mil banks or anyone who just has the money just to use it. The right? general once you have like a, yeah. yeah, a couple hundred mil, you're buying Bandos. So now that's going to not only take that Bandos away, um, but I believe that when they add the GE tax, which is going to be one to 2%, Bandos will be one of the items being burned. So we almost have like a double burn for Bandos, even though it's slight. And then you got more people wanting to make money, which means they're going to need Bandos to go grind for that armor set. So in my brain, my weird brain, I'm thinking this might actually boost Bandos and maybe like at 2x, 2, 3x. I could see like 30, 40 mil uh, Tassies again easily. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm horribly wrong. I, I think it's necessarily going to really gonna boost it in price because you need to sync. Like if you want to get the full Torvus set, you have to sync out a chest plate and a Tassets because it's based off components. Chest plate, you get three, and Tassets, you get two. And then to repair the full set, you need five. What about boots? Boots don't count as like components. They said that okay. they suck. So they boots are just them. if you're investing in bandos, don't stock up on boots. <laughs> Everything else, maybe. Just just don't stock up on boots, man. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like those items might go down a little bit just because a lot of people naturally think that when something stronger comes out, they kind of panic sell, right? So it might leave some dents, right, for a bit. For, for a foreseeable time but like nothing crazy not, nothing too crazy just because i i just can't imagine people like 99 percent of the player base even able to afford torva they don't have the option they're going to realize soon enough that there is no option for them other than to stick back to bandos right that's why i feel like there's gonna be a huge price strain on on bandos because if they can't afford torva and i mean they're not going to be using inquisitor for all of this right uh, really, the next question I have is for next because I've actually never killed it. How do you kill it? Is it a range boss? Do you need multiple teammates? Um, can you solo with melee a cold one? I'm sure you've probably killed this in your sleep way back in the day. Uh, I was a gigantic noob back in the day, but I killed a few necks. You kill it with range, and they've they've said, quote unquote, crossbows are going to be good against the boss, mm, yeah. which hints that like you know having an offhand is going to be beneficial. I'm just taking a shot in the dark and saying Spectral is going to be good because it'll probably have Soul Split like it did back in the day. Spectral reduces the amount of prayer you get drained by. But what's yeah. stopping somebody from just flicking their Tebow, just like All having right. it on for one tick and having their Spectral on for four ticks or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I feel like people might find a way to abuse the timing you know, of switches to kind of overcome it a bit, but mm -hmm. hard to say. I mean, because like, it was fake, right? They could It could also just mean like, oh, the crossbow's best and stuff for a certain phase because uh because I, i'm gonna assume that next is still gonna be similar to how it was before and and like next used to have four like what well, was like four to five phases and they would all have different abilities and stuff so i'm assuming they're gonna keep that idea going except maybe the abilities could be different so some some of the forms could be like weak to a crossbow or something no no, no. here's the here's the thing they didn't say best in slot they said it would be good yeah I mean, mm -hmm. think about it. Like a dragon hunter crossbow is good against Ohm, but a Tebow is better. Yeah, Tebow could still, still be. You know, Tebow could still be better than the crossbow. It's hard. It's hard to tell. But I'm saying it could also just be a specific phase thing. You know, they could literally be like it could be like a corp thing where a certain style weapon has to be uh, used on it or something, or like a yeah. phase. It's so, fake. They, they didn't specify. So yeah, it seems obvious and to point out that whatever armor you need for next will definitely start blowing up if not already right with the whatever they hit that <laughs> yeah so there's no melee in next at all you can't melee it you probably could i mean it's, it, you probably shouldn't though but we don't know we don't exactly know how much they're going to change it back in the day you just ranged it mostly because i was thinking like the most bullish scenario for bandos would be is if bandos was best in slot for next until you get the armor and then that you know that would be crazy but it doesn't seem that way it seems like range armadale 
all this stuff probably expect for like cold one saying so um yeah i don't know and inquisitor will inquisitor be devalued when this comes to the game other than bandos probably i i think yeah. inquisitor is what was the point of that armor set man i thought it was like more of like an obi mall attack pk set if yeah it's just, it's just for niche crush uh, yeah. scenarios but it, it well i mean like i said like cole once said it's still gonna be better than torva for a cheaper price for a crush so it might take a bit of a hit but i think it, it will still you know have a place in the game so hmm. still gonna make you look really rich when you miss your hammers anyway <laughs> yeah we'll always have i mean that. i wonder i wonder how much of a hit it can take like from where it's at right now because it's so cheap it's looking at like before, 100 yeah. mil piece for the body and the skirt. Like, 70 mil for the helm. Yeah, I remember when I got my first skirt, it was like 700 mil. <laughs> yeah, Yo. exactly. Nobody I, did I wonder it, how much, how much further it can go down, because, like, here's the thing. It is actually very difficult to get, you know? It, it's not like it's an easy drop rate or an easy boss by any means. So, I mean, thank you, Mint. I guess um, we'll just have to see. I don't know if it can drop any more, man. Like, I'd love to see the effect of all the bots that are killing it or dropping. Something really interesting, though, talking about, like, the value of um, Torva when it comes out, right? So it's like, you're right, there are items in this game that just have, like, a disgusting price for some reason. And it's like, in my opinion, if the Ellie can be a bill for this long, when, firstly, it's an Ellie, and I wouldn't rate it that well, but, secondly, if you go to any world at Corporal Beast, you will see like three or four void accounts with Bobby Capes that are just non-stop 24-7 botting the living life out of Corporal Beast. It's a wonder how it's still one bill with a shield. I don't I don't honestly understand that. I guess maybe because it's fashion scape, or maybe because it doesn't have niche use uses, it just has uses across the board. But like it's interesting to see the Ellie's kept its price versus like Inquisitor, but I guess that's more to do with like how useful Inquisitor is day to day in activities because like you can only use it in niche scenarios. So, well, yeah, yeah when I, I was um comparing the Ellie to like one of those best in slot items that Torva would probably be for the the set, right? The use case for that shield is ridiculous, man. And I think the amount coming in the game might only be coming mainly from those bots you were talking about. And if those bots didn't exist, I mean. You gotta even think, would the price of a shield go even higher with the amount of GP coming in the game and this shield being best in slot for not only PKing, but also PVM, and then you got Fashion Scape, and then on top of the rarity. Uh, it could have, I mean, I could see this shield if it wasn't botted, being like just max cash, just chilling. Just because yeah. it is the best item possibly in the game for its slot, and it's rare. Yeah, so. I dude, I I will. By the way, I will say I have a definite bias when it comes to the Ellie because I'm used to the Divine back mm -hmm. in pre EOC, and like the Ellie was just literal trash compared to the Divine. Like it was a poor man's Divine. Like the Ellie was just like if you couldn't afford a Divine, you got an Ellie. But it sucked, and um, I I guess I kind of has a, I have a bias there when it comes to my opinion. Yeah, I I just don't think there's many Ellie's coming to the game, honestly. Like, I'm not sure how much, how many. I'm not sure if there's really many bots botting it, because there's definitely bots at Nightmare, because like you see, you'll see, you can see those like on Twitter all the time. But like, I feel like Dude, corporates I, just like actually there are definitely bots. There just are very. Definitely bots. Yeah, yeah, but I just don't think there's that many going on because like Ellie is actually quite niche, even though it's best to saw tank. Most most of the end game PVMers don't really use it that much really it's like very niche actually so for it to be a bill uh, i don't know what it is right now if it's a bill then then i'm just gonna assume the supply coming in is actually yeah bill right yeah i'm assuming the the supply is actually like new i new ones coming to the game is probably gonna it's probably quite little because it's been like steadily going up the whole time so bryce you might have, like that's a really good point thinking that a lot of people could use the Ellie, but usually if you're high tier PVM, you don't care about tank, right? You just care about DPS, yeah, exactly. and killing the thing as fast as possible. And since everybody in this game wants to become that kind of PVM or they want to play as best as they can to do the best they can, um, honestly, maybe what I just said earlier about the Ellie being the best in slot shield, still best in slot, but the use case for like crazy PVM and just like speed runs, 
I don't know how hard of a use case Ellie is yeah, in there. It, it could change like, with next though. Who knows? But true. It could change. But it just seems like that's where we're trending though. Like every yeah. player wants to be the best. They want the yeah. best in slot and they want to kill it the fastest. If Ellie isn't necessary, then why buy a Bill Shield? So Min, yeah. Min, you're gonna love this. Okay? okay. If the attack patterns that happen in next just so happen to allow you to like flick between a bulwark and a Tebow. Right, and you're not losing ticks, and that's like exactly the same as using the Ellie and the Tebow. The Bulwark's gonna be there because the Bulwark is better than the Ellie, except well, in terms of defense, I guess you could argue, yeah, but you can't attack with it, which you know it is what it is. But if you're like, uh, if you're clicking between the two items, and you can do that without losing any damage or losing any ticks, the Bulwark's gonna be significantly better, like not necessarily. You don't think you put, so? If you, if you put on the defensive style, you, you can't, can't attack, attack for like what is it like eight seconds or something? Even if you want to equip, equip it. Well, the defense that comes from it, I, dude. A cold one. Could you actually figure that out? The difference between the alley and the the bulwark, if it were to be on um attack on the bulwark when you put it on as your tank switch. Oh, Ellie's better then, because then you get no defensive production values. Like, you get, like, defensive stats, but at the end of the day, you can still get hit for full value. Like, you could be in full tank armor or something, and a ranger can, in the Inferno can still hit you a 46. But if you're wearing just this, it becomes, like, what, a 39 or something like that? Like, regardless, you can still get hit. And the Ellie just reduces, like, the amount you get hit by. So, say okay. you're using a bulwark, and you're not on defense, and you're doing that switch like Racy's talking about. What... And I know you probably can come up with this on on your head, but just like a real good estimate on on how worse the bulwark is compared to Ellie in that situation, ten percent, twenty percent, whatever the defensive value is of or the defense reduction value. Or what if, I can't talk. Um, I think whatever the average, average value is of Ellie. Yeah, I think it's on average seventeen uh, percent on average or something like that. Yeah, better than the bulwark. Mm -hmm. I feel bulwark like it would be just never attacking at that point. Bulwark becomes better if you just never attack. At all, yeah. If you oh, but we're tank. talking about attacking, so we're yeah, talking. Yeah. The thing is, seventeen percent. But what is the paywall here, right? We got eleven mil shield versus a bill shield. Yeah, I yeah. just usability wise. I mean, new new yeah. people trying next will uh, will have to. Well, if if defense is involved, if shields are involved, then yeah, they can't afford an Ellie. <laughs> It'll be for like the one percent people, you know, that that have the money. True. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if you guys want to jump over to Rage Three since we're talking about defense. Well, uh, do we have anything else for bulwark. next? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say. So with the bulwark, with um not being able to have it on defense, I haven't used a bulwark in a while or flicked with it to say the least. Um, when it's on defense, is there a delay between tanking a hit and then being able to shoot like an arrow from your bow, or what's the deal there? There's a delay on both sides. So there's a delay before you get the defense reduction effect, and there's a delay before you can attack again if you want to equip it or change styles. I see, I got you. Mm -hmm. And then that that doesn't apply, I'm guessing, if you have the bulwark when it's on attack. Is Correct. That is that right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yeah. Okay. So to me, and I kind of knew that a little bit, but I forgot about the the delay when you have the defense style. But to me, it sounds like they built this bulwark with with in mind. They don't want you to attack using other weapons with it. They want you to have it on all the time and attack back. They want that's the kind of meta they're building. But it doesn't seem like there's any bosses where that's super necessary for. Maybe regular PVM, even that. Doesn't seem like the bulwark has a really big use case. But for some reason, this no use case item that's probably coming to the game super, super often because it's raids dropped is still 11 mil and climbing. Possibly going to 10 mil, right? Or 9 or 8. But it's still climbing up there, right? Still an uptrend. I just have to think, because we're jumping into Raids 3 content here. We're going to talk a little about Raids 3 is that this intended mechanic of the bulwark is going to find its place very soon in Rage 3. It almost feels like they've been building up to this tank role for so long that if Rage 3 doesn't have a role where you need a bulwark, you need some super tank, and if you're just, you just have to be tanking, right? If you don't tank, your teammate's getting one shot, you're not doing everything right, you're losing the battle. It feels like we're about to see that role, and if that role does exist, I'm buying everyone a yacht. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I want them to do it, you. to be honest. I, I hope so as well. But Mint, my question to you is, what's your sellout price, bro? Because for any of the people listening to this podcast, <laughs> Mint Mad Cow purchased a bill's worth of bulwark several months ago, and now those bulwarks are worth free bill. And he, here's 
here's the moral reason for taking the bulwarks is to take them out of the wilderness. But I know for a fucking fact, dude, if your bank goes to like <laughs> you're selling those bulwarks back to the wilderness. What's your price, man? I Everyone know you're not says that, dude. Forever, dude. There's I no way. If it's am a martyr. I am a bulwark martyr, dude. All right, maybe my PK videos won't go down in history, but when they look back and they see the one man who stood up against a double-handed shield, they will scream at Mad Cow, as my account will still have 235 bulwarks 20 years later. All right? Honestly, though, I, if nah, there's, like, dude, a new item... What you just said, and then they put <laughs> that music in, you know, like, the chicken music and the next clips you selling the bulwarks on stream? <laughs> like, I can't wait to see it. Uh, let me just save my ass just a little bit here. So... <laughs> If a really cool item comes in the game, right, and I want to make content with it, or I can't afford something right away, there is a very small chance I take a sliver of profit for content. But the <laughs> only reason, though, I bought these bulwarks in the first place wasn't even to make money. This just lined up really well. Everyone's calling me the best merch. I, dude, honestly, it was a whim. I did it because I, I hate the shield. I need to be out of the game. It's the only way I can do it. And uh, now I'm rich. I don't know what happened, dude. So I might take a... a, a a sliver of profit but honestly it's just fun to watch the value go up and uh, once they start burning bulwarks i mean and I raise three <sighs> we'll see what happens i don't know it's just exciting to me dude it really is yeah i will say though like on the subject of the bulwark there's no real use i would say i mean there are Not there yet. are uses for the bulwark on defensive like if you're tanking say bandles for your team or whatever if you're doing that that's cool but like for like end game PVM for using it strategically, I feel like it could definitely have more uses. And like something which I think would be really nice is like so the bulwark gives if you have it on defensive, the bulwark gives I believe is it ten or fifteen percent reduction of damage that's guaranteed. Something like that, yeah. <clears throat> if it's on defensive. Ah, uh, shoot! I think it's I like I feel like I should. It feels like it was like. It was 20% even, maybe. I don't 20%. remember. 20%. Right. Yeah, something so like, how, pretty how big. Cool, let, let, let's say it's 20%. How cool would it be if in Raids Free, there's like a moment where somebody in your team is going to get hit 120. Guaranteed, no way to avoid it. And the only way to avoid taking that full damage is literally if you have some sort of damage reduction armor, e.g. the Ellie, the Bulwark, or just a car. Where it's like, you literally would take it to tank that hit, and then you don't get one shot, you can heal back up and get on with the fight. Like, I feel like that would be a very cool, like, way of using the bulwark. Yeah, I need, yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. They could I do that. I have a feeling. They could do that. I have a feeling, like, so, Raid Street, I'm not a PVMer, but there's a lot of ways to get around <clears> being a tank, right? You could Tiki, you could have Phoenix, you could do all sorts of cool mechanics that Wook streams about. Um, so I feel like if they are going to add a tank role, it's not going to be like a one hit kind of thing. It's going to be, over time, constant, one person has to go do like a trial or a challenge while tanking, right? Kind of like how you have to cross that rope and get hit by those archers, which can be easily avoided. Yep. But I feel like you're mm -hmm. going to have something like that that can't be avoided. And you actually have to be a tank. You got to be on your thing. You got to keep your HP up, communications. And it's not going to be like a, a one to two minute thing. It's going to it's gonna be a big part of it. But that's my guess. I don't, I, I'm not, we'll see. <laughs> see yeah, we're just talking about like that for a. Uh for theater where there was going to be one room where there's like the key mess or one person has to like take all aggro from everything in the room while they're carrying a key to the exit or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. idea just got scrapped and now we just have click boss for sick rooms. So that, that's actually really, there's a cold one for, we, we announced him before, but he does crazy solos. So it's really good info is that it almost feels like they've been testing out tanking mechanics for years and they just yeah. have never really done it to the point where they wanted it to. And maybe they thought they did, and they're like, oh, never mind, they're just doing something else, right? Yeah, you know, Wooks just comes along and does something with, like, a flower. Like, oh, I guess tanking was not necessary for that part either. So the real question is not if Raid 3 will have tanking, but if they implement it to the point where you'll need to tank still. Because mm. they could implement it where you might need to tank, but honestly, they're just going to test yeah. play it, and then it's like, yeah, board, we're great. And then Wooks is going to come on the next day and be like, yeah, you don't really need any armor for this part you just sit in this corner and do like some crazy mechanics and you're good so it really depends like if they can finally implement what they've been trying to implement for so long I'm yeah sure i mean so sometimes people find bugs 
like the uh, the whole like redemption to skip a certain attack kind of thing but hopefully they they have it all figured out this time so like you know that stuff doesn't happen because i would love to see a a, a bona fide like tank role you know like a, a a standard thing that that is expected of people to do you know because mm-hmm. that'd be yeah. really sick i mean when you think about it like most mmos have a tank role for most people and it's like a play style yeah, you know, it's like if you play any other MMO, it's like you've got a DPS, tank, and healer. At the moment in RuneScape, we only really have like DPS. Like the other roles haven't been fully established. Yeah, yet. we've mm-hmm. spoken about this in the past, where like the Lunar Spellbook is basically a healer class. It's like you have Hill Over, you have Venge Over. It's like you have Pot like Share, that. you know, all that stuff. Ch- yeah. Exactly, like that's like the healer spellbook, but like. I, I would say that tank and healer in this game hasn't been utilized like its full potential by any means. And let's not forget, RuneScape's a game that we all play and love, and we all do our own thing in it. But like, there are literally people that will just only play a tank role in a video game. Like, that is their sole purpose. They're like, okay, I know how to draw aggro on these minions or on the boss, and I know how to not die. Like, that is their sole job. And it's like, it would be so cool to have that. I completely agree. Like, if that was in Raids 3, some sort of, like, like they're actually forcing the utilization of tank, like, that would be so cool to see. And it'd be different from anything that we've had in the last over 20 years of RuneScape. And I, I think that would be really cool to see in the game. Yeah, not, not to mention, um, so, like, you know, one of the fundamental differences between, like, our raids and, and other MMO raids is, like, our raids are basically just one boss next and then you go next next boss next boss right it's it, but whereas like i've you know like if you've seen wow raids it's like there's the boss and then in between there's all these minions you know or like even in the boss room there's a ton of minions everywhere you know and then there's that kind of makes sense with the whole like you need a healer or you need a tank i feel like old school hasn't really tried anything like that where it forces pe- someone to be so good at tanking or force someone to be so good at healing other people that it's a skill you know what i mean there's no skill set for it yet I feel like not much yeah. except maybe for some occasional speed running teams that do kind of have roles but but like for the general pvm we don't really have a skillful you know aspect to tanking and healing so yeah. and it might not be it's design um, some of it has to do with the design right so and it might not be because they don't want it it might just actually be because they're i don't want to say j mods are, are failing it they're doing great but they might actually be failing at adding the mechanic for defense in runescape they just it's such a different game that they might not know how to go about it till now. Hopefully. Yeah, because I know defense in other games, it's like the higher the defense, the less damage you do per hit. Mm-hmm. Where in this game, the higher defense, the less often that you land a hit. Your max hit doesn't decrease based on the monster's defense, just the chance that you actually land a hit. Yeah, the like look at Calista, for example. Look, look at that gigantic like rock of a bear. Like You're out there, you can BGS spec it down twice or something like that. You'll still hit like one out of five times on it. <laughs> Yeah, Yeah, because it rolls a zero. (laughs) But the thing is, like, you can still max hit, like, a 60 or whatever with your Vigor's Chain Mace. Whereas, like, you know, you go hit, like, I don't know, any other mob, like, I don't know, a Blood Veld, like, on task, you can still hit a 60, but you just do it more commonly. Mm. So it dies faster, but it's just because of how the formula works with this game. Yeah. So, uh, a cold one, you're you're a god at PVM, right? You've done things that I would... Literally, like, if someone said, you got to spend 100 years in jail or do this, I'd probably like, well, I'm obviously going to jail, right? <laughs> Those are the kind of things you've done. So I got to ask, one, do you want a tank roll in RuneScape? And if you do want a tank roll in RuneScape, how would you implement this? Or how would, how would you see it implemented to the best of its ability? Like, it would work for the future. You've been a like healer tank and healer role, but the problem is just RuneScape just being the unique MMO, how it is, and the way the combat system works it wouldn't exactly work because pretty much every boss in the game, the best way to take it down is just more damage. Like, if you had a party member, like a party size of five, let's say you have one tank, one healer, and three damage dealers. Like, yeah, it might run more smoothly with, like, one guy healing, one guy tanking, but the team of five who just have DPSers, they're going to get more kills per hour, and they're going to get it done faster. So it's just better to have five DPSers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I completely agree. How about this? How about this? So, so Cohen's really, you know, he's talking about the fact that the damage formula for this game is a little too biased towards DPS. But what if they change kind of like the design of the raid so that 
you're not just fighting a boss, right? There's going to be so many minions coming mm -hmm. at you at the same time, right? And maybe there's like some sort of skill set where someone could attract them and maybe take Isn't those that, hits. Uh, kind of what deal, the bulwark you know shield does, the special attack? Is it attracts? Well, yeah, the well, yeah, it, it attacks the AOE, right? But, yeah. But like, but the idea is that I think the difference right now is like, like I said, most bosses don't have much minions. They don't really have much going on. You can just go to, and fight the boss, right? It's just you, your yeah. team versus the boss, right? But whereas like other other raids and other games, they they sometimes often do like a massive amount of minions and stuff attacking you at the same time while you're fighting the boss, right? So may, maybe just changing the the structure of the PVM could could like yeah for something like that, you know. I think yeah. that if Jagex want there wants there to be a tank roll, quite simply they need to force mechanics that mean that you need to have a tank. Or otherwise, like like a cold one says, it's always going to be best to DPS. But like here here's the thing. So unique is a special unique. Sorry, RuneScape is a special unique game. There is no other MMO which is quite like this game with the mechanics and how precise they are. Right. So, as a cold one said. A team of five DPS is always going to be better than a team of two DPS, one healer, one tank, and another DPS, three DPS, sorry. But, like, here's the thing. I think it would be really cool if, sure, the priority is to DPS the boss, but there are certain mechanics in that boss phase where you need to have a tank. Even if it's just somebody taking full Justicar and a Bulwark in their inventory for, like, that exact moment. Not having to be a tank the entire time, because, like you said, you're not just going to be bulwark smashing Ulm at the end of the raid because it's going to be rubbish, you know what I mean? But like, luckily we have a very versatile game, and unlike many other MMOs, we have the ability to swiftly switch between being a mage, an archer, you know, a tank or a DPS. It's like, we have that option to do it. And I feel like the only way that this is ever going to happen is if Jagex specifically make it so there are mechanics in the game with these boss fights or like you said, you'll have a shit ton of stuff running at you and you want one person to absorb all that damage. Um, but yeah, I think um, even if it's a case of like the tank in RuneScape isn't necessarily a full-time tank, like you're not doing it the entire time you're in the raid, but you're doing it for just a portion of that raid, I think that that would, one, be really cool, two, be very unique, and three, would be unlike anything that other MMOs have, which is one of the things that makes our game so special is that it's not like other games. It's its own kind of way. You know, if tanking in RuneScape means that you literally just switch to tank for one minute out of a 30-minute boss fight or whatever, so be it. Like, as long as it has that extra element and mechanic to it, I feel like that would make it more interesting, I guess. All right, yeah. So I'll kind of go with that idea. If you guys have ever done Nightmare before in a group, you'll know that uh, she'll target whatever player in the room has the highest defense bonuses to her. Yeah. So you could actually build a room based off that and like pyramids of who's a what's or whatever it's called, like in Rage 3, where you've got a room with like, let's say, a hundred scarabs, like a bunch of these little bug NPCs, and they hit 10 typeless damage on you, or like 10 melee damage, but melee prayer doesn't do anything against it. So you bring in one guy that has full Justy and a Bulwark, and that'll make them deal sevens, for example. And you're going to have some tank stats, so they're not going to be hitting you that often, and they'll be all aggro to you, so teammates can clear them out with, like, ancient spells or chins or whatever AoE they want to use at the time. And since they're only hitting, like, sevens, they're not hitting tens anymore, you could effectively just keep redemptioning, since prayers aren't going to be reducing their damage anyway, and just tank through it like that. Or you could have somebody healing you the whole time, since you're the one taking the brunt into the force, and let's say you've got a team of five DPSers, and you've all got the same gear, they're going to be all over the place just whittling everybody down, and ain't no one going to be surviving that. Yeah. So that's like one so, niche use case that where a tank roll and potentially a heal healer roll could work. Okay. So, but, do you, that. is that something that you'd like to see in the game, or like be utilized more in RuneScape? How do you feel about it? I'd like to see things where there's more like team coordination required in the game. Because, like, we have enough solo content in the game. I mean, essentially, the entire game is solo content. Yeah, it's like 95% heavy, so <laughs> yeah. not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, if you release something that requires teams, everyone's gonna be like, well, how am I supposed to do this alone on my Iron Man? Well, like, well, to that MMO. Book about Iron Man <laughs> when they said uh, the game won't be catered to Iron Man? Yeah, we're gonna have to hold true to that word now, as we quote-unquote yeah. have been forever. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a lie. No, I so, really want to see even more that, I'd, like, I'd like to see more team co like yeah. components in the game, because it's an MMO after all. It's not a solitaire game. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, I, love I that. will. I will add to this. Like, I know we have like the worst guest for me to express this opinion to because if you guys don't know, a cold one solos Tob, which is like impossible to do. But this man's got it down to a T. But like, when I hear raid and I hear of doing raids, th there is no part of me that thinks that's a one man mission. I'm just like, you need a bunch of boys to go with you and like clear that shit out and kill the boss, right? And it's like, as you said everything at this point in the game can be soloed, right? It would be nice if there was something in the game which mechanically would make it pretty impossible to be able to solo. Now, I know, like I said, you're probably the worst person to say that to because obviously you enjoy soloing everything, but Wait, don't. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we have to be soloable. It's just what gets numbers, dude. Yeah, it's, it's all about what pays the bills. <laughs> and exactly. <laughs> But, you know, it's just like, it would be cool to have something which for once, like, Whoops and a Cold One aren't gonna solo in the first week of release, and it's like, they're gonna be forced to, the very least, have somebody there to, like, clear out the mobs they have to kill. I don't know, I just, I think it would be nice to have some variety, because like you said, like, people get bored of the game, right, especially when they get to endgame PVM, and I think that a part of that reason probably is due to the fact that it's just a bit lonely. Like, the best way to do everything, and the most efficient way to do everything, is to do it solo. Because if you get a twisted bow, you ain't got to split it two ways, three ways. You just keep it yourself, you know? So it's like, if there was something like a mechanic forcing a group to stay together to do a piece of content, like, it... I don't know, I feel like that's just a different path we haven't really explored. And I, I think it would be really interesting to see how that went. I, I agree. Like, you guys have kind of given me some ideas, because I'm not a PVMer, but You've let's say enough. they do... No, well, not really. But <sighs> let's say that we're in a room, right, in Rage 3, whatever it looks like, and every five minutes, if you haven't completed the boss, right, maybe there's a timer, it takes about 20 minutes to do Rage 3 if you're really good. Every five minutes, there's just a horde spawn, where just minions spawn everywhere. And if you don't have, like, over two to 300 defense bonus, you're getting ticks once constantly. So it's just slowly bringing down your supplies. So you want to have that tank class there and just kind of my idea on what they could do. And then with the bulwark, it would work really well because it has that special attack that does the aggro. So you just special attack with the bulwark. You go around the room doing that and your teammates give you special attack because they need you to be alive. So you're just constantly going over and just stacking all of these minions on you. And then uh, once you get them stacked and everyone did uh, the spec transfer, you can just flood rise the pile and you live, right? Uh, just one idea of maybe how they could implement tanks in the future to where if you don't have them uh you're not gonna do the you're not gonna do the raid i don't know i was just coming up with that idea when you guys were talking man yeah yeah i think like for me as well on like a personal level i think it would be like i feel like if there were those kind of mechanics in the game you would probably and i hope that you would see like the revitalization of pvm clans where it's like hey if you really want to clear raids free and you want to do it consistently and make money, you either need a consistent team that are online all the time, or you need to be a part of some sort of community where you can be like, hey, uh, I'm down to do this. Who wants to go? Because, like, I don't know. I kind of miss that. Like, that's the thing with, like, MMORPGs. It's like you expect to do stuff with people, and it'd be nice to be, like, almost forced in a sense, if you want to do that piece of content, to have to team up with people and you're definitely going to benefit doing that with people that you can speak to on comms and be like, okay, this person needs to heal now, this person needs to heal then. Like, I genuinely think that would be some of the most interactive, engaging, and just straight up funny and frustrating shit that like probably would exist in the game. Because you'd have the, like, imagine if it was like us, like us four, and we took solo mission, we five-man raids <laughs> free, and we're having to communicate with each other on who's going to heal who next and shit, and somebody's going to fuck up. And it, like, I just feel like it would be fun. It it's would be that damn snake. I don't want to raid with that snake. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you, you get, you get what I'm saying. I feel like it could do some good for the community as well as adding like some variety, variety to the game. Yeah, and I, for I sure. Think that would be nice to see. Oh, yep. man, it reminds me of when raids first came out, and I, I were you guys there? I think most of us were there. We just yeah, had a big Discord team. call. Oh, no, EBS was... set it all up. And when there was like 20 or 30 content creators, and we just all rushed raids together. And it was just nonstop screaming and dying. And that's kind of <laughs> when you were describing that little five way where we uh, don't know what we're doing and just dying or having a good time. That's what it reminds me of, man, before everyone got really, really sweaty, Rice. 
Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> real sweaty at raids, buddy. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. It's not. It's nice to relive those moments, and yeah, maybe raids three will be like that. I, I honestly have no idea. Um, I think. I think it would just add like an extra level to the game. I really do. I think that it would add an extra element and like a community aspect. And like, I don't know if that's anything Jagex care about, because like, and no, this is no disrespect to Jagex. They've clearly taken the solo path because Iron Man's been such a popular success. And I would probably debate has more or less kept the game alive for as long as it has been. So there's an incentive for things to be there for Iron Man. But like, for Iron Man as well as the rest of us, like, it would be really cool if there was just a difference in that content. Like, until a cold one said it earlier, I never really think of it as like everything in the game is soloable. But like, if you want to, and you've got the time to figure it out, you can pretty much do everything solo. And that's something which, like, it just feels a little bit hollow. It's like, it'd be cool if there was something which stopped you being able to do that. And it was like, you're forced to have to communicate and be with other players. Like, yeah, I just think that would be a cool little thing to have. I, I do too. And Tom, when you were talking about how everything's soloable and, um, oh God, just like if Iron Man boosted the game by just having Iron Man mode, that's why we're still alive. I'd love to have a podcast on the positives and negatives of Iron Man on RuneScape. And we could bring Iron Man on and we could have like people on each side you know, because I swear to God, some people be like, Iron Man are the downfall of RuneScape. And then some are like, this is why the game's still going. I feel like that'd be a great yeah. podcast. One thing I can chip into that is it definitely kept me playing the game longer than it initially would have. Because I played uh, old school on release for like a few months. Like, you know, just built up an account, just went to Willy, just, just started like, you know, edge fighting everybody. And it, it got old after a while. I was playing League of Legends trying to grind my rank on that. So I jumped ship. And then, like, two years later, one of my boys tells me, like, yo, like, an old-school RuneScape's got Bounty Hunter, kind of like it was back in the day. I was like, oh, shit. So I started building up a Baby Pure, started building nice. up a med level, started having fun with that. And then he also told me about Iron Man mode. I was like, oh, what's that? It's like, well, it's like a solo game mode, but you look like an absolute champion, Chad, the whole time. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. So <laughs> I threw that thing at Muggle of Mine for a while while I was just, like, you know, building up emblems, dying a bunch, losing malls and shit, you know? But after a while, like, BH got old for me, like, my Iron Man started getting higher level, I started getting more interested in that. And then BH got removed altogether, so... Like, if I wasn't playing Iron Man when BH got removed completely, I think that would have just done it for me altogether, and I just would not be playing today. I think yeah, a lot but... of people probably feel the same way. And I, I, don't, I don't have one way or the other, right? It's like, anytime I see an Iron Man update come out, I'm like, hey, cool, good for them! And it's like, of course, I want more Wildy updates. But overall, there's been such a bias between Iron Man either ruining the economy or making the game better. Or just, you know, you've heard all these discussions on Reddit and stuff. They're going to be nice. The ruining the economy thing 100%. Right? That's just there's... the style of the way they play. If you're saying, like, oh, they're flooding the market with their duplicates, I'm like, no, okay, so what's a I'm main doing it. with the drops that they get? <laughs> oh, they're putting, like, these Bandos chest plates they don't need on the Grand Exchange, and it's a main account doing it. And can, they can do it faster than an Iron Man. No, I'm saying, yeah. like, I'm not saying this. It's Most just Iron what I'm hearing. It's like, drop, like, that many. This this idea of Iron Man and RuneScape is just I don't know, man. It's so there's there's both sides. I'd love to have a podcast where we just talk about all the sides, but that's that's for later. I just um, in my brain. Uh, Cold, I got a question for you though, since we're speaking about well, we were speaking about Iron Man, but for next items and uh, raid three items, uh, do you see any of these items coming into the game helping you with your solo adventures? Right, like when you do those TOB runs, like any of these items. Are you looking forward to in the game? Are you going to pick it up right away and just start grinding? Oh, yeah. There's a few that I've got my eye on. And when they did the beta world for the pyramids of whatever rewards, I tested a few of them out. So there's three of them that I'm looking at from there. And then, like, obviously the tour of a set from Nex. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. nasty. Let's hear some strats, bro. All right. So I know, I know you've done a few tops because you did it on release. You know, you got your cheats slapped uh, and blowed a couple of times, I remember. On top day release. So you remember the little room with all the crabs in it, right? Yeah, I remember the crabs. All right. So uh, one of the things they're coming out with is called like the Wand of Gargalon or whatever. And <laughs> it's like a trident. If you've seen Trident Sanguine Essie Staff, it's a powered staff. You don't need to be on a spell book for it. It just shoots out stuff. But mm -hmm. it, it does it like in a very strange way where its first three attacks are on blowpipe speed. And then the fourth one is on like a trident speed and it hits really big. So when you got this room with all these like little mini crabs floating around and you have to hit multiple targets like really fast, one's pretty good for that since you can clear them up a bit faster like at the speed of a blowpipe. 
Then you can throw the big one at like one of the big boys and just like one shot it much more consistently. So there's that, which is really nice. Uh, there's like the best in slot magic shield, which gives you magic uh, strength. You have to combine with an arcane spirit shield or something. Mm -hmm. Just plus one damage up with Dawnbringer, which I find really nice. And yeah. the last one, which I think is the biggest one, and I think it's going to be really good for Chambers of Zarek speeds and CM speeds, is the Ring of something. I, I don't know its name. It's the Ring. Yeah, the ring of Gargalon. Like... Yeah, 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 the Ring it's... of Gargalon. We'll call it that. <laughs> it, it doesn't have any stats on it, but while you're wearing it, it doubles the rate at which you get your special attack meter back. Oh, damn! Mm -hmm. That's insane. Uh, it can't be manipulated. So you know how Rapid Heal works, where if you turn it on or turn it off, it resets your HP regen timer. Mm -hmm. So it works like it that. So instead time. of every 30 seconds getting special attack meter back, it's every 15 seconds while you have it on. You just get another 10% okay. and it just goes up faster. Yeah, yeah. that it's is really, yeah, pretty really cool. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That you're going to be using those items in a certain way. Nothing that like breaks the game though, right? Nothing that you like are strategizing where if you use this, it's just going to completely, I don't know, a whole new strat, right? Just, just uh, kind of sl slightly helpful. I mean, just for comparison points, like, Phase one of Versic where you got to stand behind the pillars and stuff. You remember that, right? Yeah, so, I know. I've seen it. Yeah. All right. So what, like, all the new items allow me to do? Normally, if I have, like, a perfect phase one, if I'm speedrunning it, it's three minutes and 36 seconds. The few test runs that I did, they were all under three minutes with the new items. So that's more than a 30-second time save just instantly, just off these items. Jeez. But that's the most exaggerated case of it. Every other time, it's, like, a few seconds here and there that I can save. Yeah, I, I ask these questions because, well, one, you have a pretty deep, intensive history in, in PVM, but two, it always uh, really interests me as somebody who's not in a PVM, what can these items actually do and how how insane, like maybe RuneScape themselves when they were developing these items didn't even think about some of the stuff you can actually do and change, right? Because there's so many things to think about, right? If you change a blowpipe, you got to change these items. So it's hard to really calculate everything that could happen when you add new stuff into RuneScape. So there's always going to be just something that can be done super well or super fast. And uh, honestly, when next comes out, that's what I'm going to be looking forward to is seeing who does what with what item. Just, just to see what happens. Yeah. Sure oh, thankfully, the JMods are very, like, they're much more cognitive about, like, what items can do in the game and what changes nowadays yeah. affect the game. And they're nowadays. pretty communicative with us. So... I remember, like, there's some range armor that comes into the game with Raids 3 where you need to be on, like, low life to get range bonuses or something like that. So I know Arcane's been in cahoots with Adicon about, like, how good that is for, like, Inferno or just Chambers of Zarek and how reasonable, like, the uh, the requirement is to get that bonus damage. So mm -hmm. they've been on talks with that, which is nice. But they're much more aware of, like, what items can do if yeah, you're releasing sure. the game. It's not going to be a sneaky blowpipe like before. That's for sure. It's just... It's, there's there's i don't know man wooks is such a big brain bro there's like no way they can calculate everything <laughs> in the game with all the new items coming in and see every change that's gonna happen yeah there there's might always be one something. thing that that what? might be i mean have you seen the zora drop table over years i mean there's a couple yeah, things oh, that, like, was back in the of... day. that was back in the day when like i know but know much about their own game like that to be fair but yeah yeah. PTSD, man. Yeah. I mean, no. Zora back in the day used to be the affluent anaconda. Now it's the poverty python. <laughs> yeah, it's no nowhere near as good. Yeah, Money the mighty have fallen. So, the cold one. My question to you, man. Like, I think it, I just find it really funny that you're going to be using new content to destroy old content that we've had for such a long time. So, my question to you is if you're planning on going back to TOB, are you doing this to set records or are you doing this to like finish off items that you haven't got or like what's your deal with that? Oh no, for purposes of just speed running, I just do that on the main account. I don't care to do that on the hardcore. But right, so, like speed, right, so, speed yeah, running so. solo tob, like I've had the record for it multiple times and before the new like RC spellbook changes came out, I got the record back for I think about like two months. And then as soon as that book came out, new strategies got devised and it got beaten uh, we'll beat, pretty well. We'll uh, I think it was Horse Lord, and I think Resk might have it again now. Horse Lord? Yeah, Horse Lord. <laughs> oh, Horse Lord. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I was thinking something else. And then Resk got it back again. Resk is another incredible gamer as well. Mm -hmm. Like, we go back and forth with, like, ideas for, like, trying to, like, min-max everything we can do in Solo Tob just to get the number lower. 
Yeah. yeah. That's great. And to be fair, you're so right. Like, whenever... I've always been like this. Like, I could have done, like, a thousand TOBs, and then the minute you get, like, a new toy to be able to play with in there, like, the scythe or something, like, it just feels like a completely different time. I don't know if that's just me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm that's why I like to do well. Like, when new content comes out, of course you're going to try your new toys in Chambers, and Chambers is kind of like... I don't know, like the cornerstone of PVM now. I swear, like that content is held up against the test of time, and I think today is honestly one of the best pieces of PVM content that Jagex has actually released into the game. Mm-hmm. You can have any party size from one to a hundred. Yeah. You can do it with, like any style of like player. It's it's just all around good. Mm-hmm. I don't really think I can yeah, say a Chambers bad thing about was it. Breakthrough it was definitely uh, breaking new new territory mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, I think um like the only. Th- the only kind of like issue I currently have with Chambers and TOB, and this is completely separate from the content being good, is the prices of the items. And like, there, there's just something about seeing, you know, like a Sanguesti staff being like 60 mil, where I'm just like so off put by doing that content. I'm just like, man, if I free man that, that's what like a 20 mil split for one of the best items you can get. And like, I guess we could kind of tie this in. Oh, apparently it's 53 mil for the Sanguesti. Ooh, oh, apparently even we better. Could, <laughs> we could kind of tie this into, like, you know, what they're going to be doing. We could touch a little bit on the Grand Exchange tax, if you guys want, because they were talking about sacrificing items. I was just curious, a cold one, what do you think about that? With the um, the burning of items, and specifically, quite a few of the Cox and TOB rewards that they've suggested. I think this should have been done a long time ago. Like, the damage is pretty staggering already, considering, like, how many people do you think do raids a day? Like, tons of them. I, I'm pretty sure at this point there's more prayer scrolls in the game that are on the market, like physical, tangible prayer scrolls, than there are accounts that can activate them and use them at this point. And I, I'd say it's probably, like, 10x more. It's pretty bad. Now... We're talking about the GE tax, which, oh, God, dude, I love this topic, man. I really do. It just, it just sounds like gold to my ears. And, yeah, Colvin, you bring up a great point that they should have had this in the game a long time ago. They should have been doing anything a long time ago. And I believe the rate's going to be about 1% to 2%. For those who don't know, they're going to take 1% to 2% of certain items, use that fund to buy the item back from the GE, and then just burn it out of the game. So they're taking a tax, and then they're using it to, to uh, minimize the supply of that item. I wonder, you know, just let me know if this is a decent idea, is uh, maybe they can go out to each item then and kind of like the price point, they want it above. Not the price point it, it should be at, right? Because they shouldn't. That'd be weird. You can't just specify an item. But say AGS. That should be way over 20 mil, right? It's the best PK weapon in the game. It really is. So what if they did for certain items that they need to go up? They hike the rate up until it hits that price point, and then it goes back down to 1% to 2%. So say... Ah, uh, man, like, uh, just AGS again. It's 12 mil right now. They wanted to go 20 mil, so the tax rate goes up 5 6%. And it just chills there until, say, it does go above 20 mil, and then it just kind of settles right back down. And that's kind of a nice way to keep items at a above a certain price point without being, I don't know, too involved in, in the economy. Just kind of have that been. idea. If the tax on is higher, I feel like that would dissuade people from even trading it on the grand exchange in the first place. They just looked to buy it in person at that point. Well, that's that would okay too. I mean, unless they're getting burned out of the game. Honestly, having an, an economy outside of the grand exchange is completely fine with me as well. I, I would love to see that come back to fruition because I think we all forget how hard it was to buy items without the GE in the first place. And if I'm trying to buy an item, even if there's a 5% tax on it instead of a 1% to 2%, I'll probably use the Grand Exchange. I think most people who have any amount of money would probably do that. And for those who don't, should have the option to go through bank sales and try to get some good deals. Yeah. yeah. I miss that too. Something we spoke about it in the last podcast we did with Flipping Old School RuneScape, and we were talking about there being players who try to get around the tax system by trading and stuff. And we were speculating on whether or not that was going to bring more you know, scammers into the game and stuff. So I don't know if you guys have seen, but uh, apparently they have made it so there's like a bigger delay in the trade screen now in the game when you take an item out. Basically, it seems like they're preparing for that to become a reality. And they're probably being quite cautious and knowing that people are probably going to try to get around that tax. 
trade in the in-game screen, and they're making it harder for scammers to get away from it. So I thought that was quite an interesting thing. When did they extend that? Because that's really good knowledge, actually. So I think it was in the uh, the last blog post that they posted. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm referring to information that's been like passed down to me through my Twitch chat. So I don't know if Rice Cup or a cold one have read the new blog post, but apparently, yeah, they've made it more difficult to scam people in the trade screen. Mm. So yeah. it definitely seems that they are trying it. to. Yeah, they're anti It's like just look at what RuneScape's anticipating and make your moves after that if you're trying to trade yeah. right. But and this it, is good. Like this is a good precautionary step to take. And like I don't. I I mean we've had we've had J mods on the podcast before and i hope that you know they occasionally do watch them but like that's a serious issue man it's like if people are going to start trading in game more and they're going to be getting scammed more it's like taking the steps of making the trade screen a little bit more aids to get through it's like you know that's it's a toggleable option like i think it'll just be set to like the baby mode yeah. where it's delayed by default but you'll be able to turn it off if you want because there are like instances in pvm where you quickly trade something over like in tob duos you trade over an imbued heart some people just drop it on the floor, some people trade it, but they're making it so that doesn't get changed if you don't want it to, which is nice. Yeah, and toggleable options are always, like, my favorite as well, because I'm yeah. I'm a bit of a boomer, man. I like the game the way it was. <laughs> All right, one, th one thing I want to bring up is, like, kind of a transition into the next topic, which is more of a PvP-related, but it has to do with, like, a toggleable option. I don't know if anyone saw, there was, like, a sound effect and a message that got added when you get unfrozen. Can we please have an option to just turn that sound off? Because I hear, like, this ringing sound anytime my freeze timer expires in LMS, and it pisses me off every time mm -hmm. I hear it. I was like, can we not? <laughs> please. Like, yeah, your PK with off. sounds on, bro? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, the entire game it's easier. It's just yeah, it's easier. a lot nicer. <laughs> That's how so, endgame PVMers play, man. Yeah, I just gotta ask sounds. the chat, how many of our audience plays with the sound on? Because I feel like every other game I play, I have to have the sound on. But I ain't touching that on RuneScape. Okay, I've heard Sea Shanty too many times. I don't got to hear no I love it. <laughs> no music. But no music, no sound effects, no alkene sounds. I mean, they're nostalgic, but I just I don't I mean, play with them at all. Here's the thing. For like an instance like LMS, where like you're moving the camera a lot, and like let's say your guy gets unfrozen and he runs off, and he gets gap on you. If you hear like a freeze effect, you know, like, okay, that's going to max like 32 or 35, depending on what his gear is. Where if you don't hear anything, then like, you know, okay, it's a bolt and I've got free range on, so it only maxes this. I can use that as a cue to know like what damage I'm taking, even though I can't see him. There's like a bunch of different things. Yeah. That, that sounds real more. sweaty. <laughs> so, yeah. hey man, trying to get well, those points, man. Oh, I respect it. I respect it. Here's um, mm -hmm. a little bit of speculation, so I'd like to hear what you guys have to think. Because speaking of the little message that pops up in game, I didn't realize there was a sound because I don't play with with sounds on. It's but so obnoxious. <laughs> I saw the message earlier, and the first thing that popped into my head when I saw it was, I was like, hey, hold up, that's new. And I was like, that's interesting. And I had this thought where I was just like, is this them making that transition? We've spoken about it and speculated a, a lot about them trying to move to their own client. And as you all know, if you use Runelite, you get like freeze timers and stuff, and like it tell you how long you've got left until you're unfrozen. And I was thinking, like, maybe this is one of those little things that they're doing to their own client because it's like a built in Runescape in the actual Runescape client itself that's making this little sign and also sound go off. Maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm speculating too much, but I was thinking maybe that's one of the small changes they're making to improve their client. And um, I don't know why that just went through my head. Dude, when that's I a before. great observation, honestly. I feel like we're doing a lot of this where like we're guessing what's going to happen in the future by what Jagex is doing now. And I feel like these guesses are, are really good guesses, man. Maybe that is a reason why to get us on the Steam client. I do have to say, though, if you are listening Jagex, instead of a sound, because I know there's many people don't play or maybe they're hearing impaired, maybe it'd just be easier to add on to the animation of Barrage to where like your feet are frozen a little bit or something, you know? It, like every other video game, if you're frozen, it has some sort of effect where you can kind of tell. RuneScape is just blocked and then it's gone. And then you just guess. What if like your feet are a little frozen or maybe there's like on your HP bar, it's kind of yellow. There's so many things you could do instead of adding a horrific sound. I haven't heard it, but I'm guessing it's horrific. So just throwing that out there. That's a great observation, though, Rixie. That, that might actually be what they're doing is slowly yeah. getting us used to. Do you, guys, 
Do you guys think that could have anything to do with that, with like trying to get rid of third party clients, or do you think I'm just looking way too far into it? Well, I know they are definitely working on that. <laughs> no matter what what they're trying to do now, like at this point, it's pretty clear. Do you want to hear the sound? Oh, dude, go for it. Let's hear it. I mean, I'll just run down to an LMS real quick and just run a game and just get frozen. And be like, yo, can you? If they're not freezing me, just like, yo, can you freeze me? And then we wait twenty seconds for it. There like, you go. To be completely honest with you guys, like at, at this point, I feel like we covered most of our topics, so I'm just gonna go into this tangent here. But like, as soon as they add the value of the bank, right? They make it so that you can uh, highlight drops that are dropped from certain monsters, like Bandos Tacit. You can make it so it's like purple text or whatever, or like sparkles. And they also make it so you can tag a boss and you can see when it's going to spawn and where it's going to spawn. Like, I swear, if those few things were added into the game, I'd probably just... That, that's all I use. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's all I really need. And maybe even chuck in, like, a little loot checker at the side so it tells you how many things you've Loot killed. checker, please. That's all I want. I, there's no... Yeah. Oh, that's all I want in game is a loot, loot checker. Dude. Like, I, or, oh, I agree. Yeah. There's only yeah, I'm a sure few everyone's things got their own right. list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I'm sure there's people that have a lot more needs than I do, but... Yeah. Like for me, that's that's all it would take for me to make the switch, to be honest. And I'd, you know, I'd probably wait until they force us off of rune light, just because I'm stuck in my ways a lot of the time. But like when it came, I'd ch I'd swap over. It was the same with me for OS Buddy. I used OS Buddy for like so long, into the period where everyone used to laugh at people playing OS Buddy because it cost money, even though I had my account for free, so I wasn't paying anything. But I didn't swap into rune light until I went to uh, Demonic Gorillas. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the frames down in Demonic Gorillas is like way too high yes. for the OS Buddy client, and it crashed my client. And I was so <laughs> angry. I was like, fuck this, I'm going on Runelight. And yeah. I, I never looked back. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know about that. It did the same for the vanilla client as well. God, that's oh, so trash. <laughs> on, on, the, on the subject of what could get people to the Steam client, for me personally, Loot Tracker, number one thing. And two, I'm actually PK on a Steam client because my username's actually getting spammed right now, so I can't PK on RuneLight. Forever. Still, <laughs> still clapping cheeks, right? It doesn't matter too much. But a couple things that would make it a little better for me. Uh, one, honestly, what's that? It's like a GPU setting on RuneLight that just makes everything look better. It, what is that? Because HD. Yeah, GPU. Not, not even GPU, HD. GPU it's render. Just, yeah, it's just GPU render. It's not even HD. You can render distance farther. Everything looks a little less pic uh, pixelated. Because if you go on the Steam client, uh, actually just go on Steam and, and load up RuneScape, there's just an HD graphic of someone doing something. I swear to God, they took that off of RuneLight HD. Because there's no way you can get that quality on Steam, bro. <laughs> it looks like you're playing Roblox through like 320p. It's awful. So if they could just make it a little smoother, just an option where you could toggle it so it doesn't look like absolute garbage. And a loot tracker, I'm a happy man. That's all I need. That's so my my question real quick for the official RuneScape vanilla client. Um, are they gonna force us to play that through Steam or can you just download their client from the website? Like, what's the deal with that? They only let one person play per Steam account, so it'd be real weird if they would want to minimize their profit, because obviously everyone has like 10 to 20 accounts if you're real sweaty. So they'd want more people to have more accounts. So I feel like definitely they, you could download the vanilla, but it is it is weird. You can only have one account per Steam. Okay. Yeah. Right, and part of the reason I asked that, it's a double viral question, is because I was watching Mint stream the other night, and I swear for like half an hour, this man was trying to like stop Steam friend requests, like popping up. <laughs> and I was I literally looked at my Steam list to see if I had him added because I was gonna start spamming him. <laughs> I didn't. So I <laughs> I'm out there PK and we're like right. four pixels and just all oh wait, Cold, you got that sound. Uh yeah, I'll put up this guy. Looks like this guy wants to mage me. Well let, let me know oh, when, when you're about to have it. Um God, what was I saying, dude? Yeah, I'm just playing, I'm PK and there's like two pixels on the screen. I it's all dark, all right? It just cuts off. And then every five or ten seconds, a quarter of my screen gets filled up with a square. Right. <laughs> so you're gonna hear the sound in like eleven seconds. Do you hear the sound for it? This guy has no idea what I'm doing right now. We can't unlucky. hear any sounds, actually. And you don't need to stream it, by the way. Oh, unlucky. What is he? I can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, we can't hear anything. 
Oh, it's because like... you have to stream it. Oh, yeah, that's the sound. Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, wait, yeah, so you don't hear it, like, from this? No, we no, don't hear I'm anything. I'm not hearing it. I hear the range attacks, no. Mm, is it mute? Did you turn off the sounds or something? Or I mean, record it off the sounds? Oh, you can uh, no, it. hang on. I can do it on that. It's just going to mess with, like, the way that you have things. Yeah. It's okay. I mean, we're, we're just trying to hear the sound, right? right? This live on the show. Uh, it's easy to fix. Once you close it, it'll go, go, go back yeah. to normal. So. But they're, Man, they're I'd not... laugh so hard if they've made it like the... um. Okay. You know, uh, I'm trying to see if I can hear it. Oh, I hear it. Okay. Yep, I hear it now. Okay, just waiting for it to... uh Cool, cool off. Uh, let yeah, me know yeah, yeah. when it's about to, so I can raise the volume yeah. up. <laughs> oh god, that's such a bad sound. Yeah, I heard that. What it was that? like a bang. <laughs> what is that, Notre Dame? What is that? What the hell? Dude. Okay, 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 okay. Good. Uh, we heard it, we heard it. I picked it up. I picked it up, I picked it up. <laughs> what did okay. you bonk a J-Mod on the head of a pan for that sound? That's the dumbest <laughs> ever, bro. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, like... Oh There's my god. The Steam client needs to work on. And yeah, yeah. They're working pretty fast though, to be fair. I've seen they've been <laughs> big squares pop up and then like I had to Google how to fix that. It took a while. Like you gotta go to your friends list, pop it up. Just I don't know, man. It, it it's a work in progress, but there's some things that you can't even fix because they're using Steam as a platform, which is good to get people into the game. But Steam itself isn't really uh great. <laughs> you know, it's it's a bit clunky, a bit awkward. So I don't know, man. I'm not sure about that business model, but it will it will it will have a, a player base still. So, yeah, an audience yeah. I guess they may maybe have some master marketing plan for Steam later on in the future. Let's let's hope, dude. Let's yeah. because hope, I don't man. think they they would be working on it so much if they don't have like all these other future plans with it. So I mean, um, I don't think it's that difficult to get your game put onto Steam, aside from like a couple of checks to make sure it's not like a, a virus or a rat or something like that. And when you think about it, Steam's such a massive gaming platform, I guess at the very least it's just extra exposure for Jagex. But um, I, I don't remember if you, I don't recall if you remember boys, but a while back when we had Modman K on, like he was saying the next like obvious step for RuneScape to get a bigger viewer bl uh, player base would be to get RuneScape on the console. So, can you imagine playing RuneScape on your Xbox or your PlayStation? Yeah. No. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't, but other people would. So. No, well, you think, you think that's ridiculous, but there's Minecraft on console, not only your yeah. phone, which blew up for some reason. I remember going to school and there'd be all these little chunky kids playing Minecraft on their phone. But you got on the Xbox and, and all these consoles, and Minecraft doesn't, like, it, it works. But I mean, so would RuneScape, right? And he's he's not wrong. Like, if you were just chilling on your Xbox, you see old school RuneScape pop up, you'd be curious, right? If you've never heard about it in like 10 years, you're like, dude, I used to play that. It's still alive? You just, I don't know how the controls would work or how woodcutting would work, but he's kind of got a point, man. I don't know. I'd love to have Mob Matt K on um, just because he has some really interesting insight in where, uh, where this game could go. I don't think it will go that way, but I don't know. I'm just reading his tweets. It's kind of one of those things, right, where it's like, I don't know if you guys ever think about this. You ever think about, like, oh, has RuneScape ever hit its ceiling? Like, has it had its day in terms of, like, the biggest peak it's going to have? And for me, it's like, while there's still consoles that we've not expanded to, such as, you know, well, the console, be an Xbox, PlayStation, etc. Like, I always think, like, there's still room for growth. There's still a possibility that it could have its day on one of those consoles because like we all saw what mobile did mobile was massive like enormous for the game and its player base like we actually have a super super healthy player base right now i mean it's pretty much like 100k people online almost every single day which is uh pretty goddamn good to be honest mm -hmm. true that like i mean we're doing good right now. right now yeah we'll be doing Funny. good for a while with all these updates the only way I could see RuneScape peaking again, oh, dude, <laughs> probably if they, I don't know, man, this would be a good podcast topic as well. It's like, how could RuneScape continue its growth and not they could die? They pay its creators each month. 
Bro, I need to get a of thing, uh, mango. Used. Hey, what about dividends for those who hold bulwarks? I get paid monthly. Yeah. I don't know, man. Sorry, what did you say? I pulled one. I missed you there, bud. I mean, they could have paid us instead of paying Mango. Like, we spent yeah, five days getting the yeah. first Infernal Cape, and we didn't get paid Jack. Mango called it Runestone and got paid 20000 <laughs> playing it for two hours. Yeah. So I have, get I have that's a really that's a really good topic, man. So obviously we know that RuneScape's built with its community, and inside this community, there's a lot of content creators that help build it to this point. Not a hundred percent, but honestly, like if you saw Twitch five, six years ago, and you saw Bodie doing PKN, twenty kill streaks, and you got Bone Salt his first fire dude, cape, that was ten k views. Dude, dude, old these, Bodie and Demo was fire, man. I miss that. These are the content creators. I'm not talking about myself, but these are the content creators that have built RuneScape to where it even could be, right? Before Iron Man, making Iron Man. I mean, they have statues of certain content creators who've made game modes. I mean, you got C Engineer creating PvP world content where RuneScape has failed. So maybe the best way for RuneScape to actually grow is to pay these people and not like some random people, which is never all random people. Because th those guys, one, they were playing on a test server, right? And then they just never played again. Like, they just gone. Just, we're good. We got the money. We're going to go out. Uh, if they keep the money inside the community, man, I mean, just think how much faster we would grow already. Like, you're not paying these content creators inside the community now. Just, just think. Like, if you put a fire under everyone's ass and just maybe even flow them out and come up with a game plan. Because, I mean, who, who made RuneScape pop on Twitch? Yeah, I mean, the and content YouTube? creators have carried this game like undoubtedly and that also don't like undermine yourself dude like that includes you as well like uh, you have probably like millions of views on youtube solely from runescape for the most part like that's free advertisement and that goes for all of us but like i think an interesting question to ask the chat and to ask the audience is like do you think that jagex should pay its very own content creators or at least have some sort of like I remember hearing a long time ago about having like a sign up for membership like program where say you have a link in your description of every video and like if you get a thousand like a referral play RuneScape for your link you get like a referral payment or something like that like that right there I think would be a great incentive and I think would I'd love that because it'd benefit me and um you know I feel like it would benefit a lot of other people as well and um like just hearing what the uh, the community have to say about that because, like, you know, you got to understand, like, from Jagex's point of view, it's like, why are they going to pay people that already play the game? Doesn't make sense. But maybe having, like, some kind of incentive, which A, does very good for the game, and B, helps that creator out who is actually, you know, advertising the game for you, that could probably be a nice relationship, I imagine. And, like, you know, it is what it is. Like, it's just something that we haven't ever had. So I guess it's something where I'm like, it would be fucking awesome to have it, but I've been able to struggle on through the way it is right now anyways. Uh, and speaking of, did you guys get sent the uh, the thing that Jagex sent recently? Have you guys received anything from Jagex? What, the book thing that they've been sending out? Yeah. I haven't gotten mine. Do you actually... I'm going to grab mine real quick. I'll show you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I'll wait for time. Can you grab, yeah. you grab the yet. packing asbestos that they used? <laughs> asbestos, dude. Oh. I mean... Like, the... The material they used to keep it safe is like it's. Uh, <laughs> oh God. Yeah, it's a lot. I'll show you something. So, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know, it says on the box that this is like I think it's a hundred USD. Mm -hmm. And it's it's made in China. It's a hundred USD. I, I'll quickly show you. So it comes in this like mad fan. Like this thing's heavy, bro. It's yeah, it's heavy. If you could hit someone over the head with this, it's gonna do some damage. But like, it's really nice. It's fancy. But I will say right. So this is a hundred dollars. They sent it to me for free, and I ain't gonna lie, bro. It came, and I don't know if you guys can see this. You see, like those wrinkles, like this fucking book, like straight up fell off the packet. Like this is literally fallen off like a forklift, or like someone's just fucking yeeted it in the back of the truck, and it's like a hundred dollar. <laughs> it's like it's like indented on itself with how like heavy the book is. Um, but the book itself is uh, it, it it's really nice. Like this is. Okay, it's got like golden leafed pages. Not real gold, but it looks real fancy. And then it's got like beautiful illustrations and stuff like inside of the book. And uh, if you're anything like me, I really appreciate this stuff. Like I really like this. But like this at the moment is 
the kind of bonus incentive like a RuneScape content creator can expect at the end of the year. It's like you get you get set something like this or a T-shirt, unless your name is Mint Mad Cow. For some dude, reason, actually, you never get Tom. Anything. They sent me my T-shirt. Did you no, check no, it? Oh, oh shit! Really? No, he's Are back. You kidding? He's back full time. No, I think it's yeah, shit, dude. <laughs> 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 one, one second, I just pulled my fucking heads out. Oh my god, Tom, oh, man, dude, I'm jealous. I want a book. That's hilarious. Uh, good prank, dude. <laughs> it's okay, dude. I'll be known for oh, both. I was literally about mm -hmm. to crack the joke, maybe because they saw you moving over to New World. They were like, shit, we need to get him back. Let's send him a fucking t shirt, dude. Mm -hmm. Nah. Nah, bro. Um, but that book is pretty cool. Uh, oh God, what were we talking about earlier? So, getting back on the last topic, I had, I had something to say where we're talking about how could they grow the game through their own community. And honestly, I think we're. It is a nice book. It's got some demons, demon circles and stuff. I don't know. Uh, they're close to what I think would be the best way to grow their game. They have a Discord. They've done events. I mean, you got what Soup doing Gilinor Games, and you got these servers for uh, uh the for battle, uh, battle royales yeah, yeah. and stuff. So they have these ideas, right? But why aren't they chucking more money at this, right? Why aren't they chucking more money at Soup's Gilnor games? Why aren't they flying these people over instead of spending money on people who don't even play the game? Why not? It seems like the best way to grow this game at the moment, other than developing new content or going onto a new platform, is just to give these content creators money, kind of like how Mr. Beast does, and just create publicity. And it wouldn't even be that much money. It'd be like 10 to 20 grand every couple months on an event because i mean they're already doing it they already have a content creator discord just just chuck some projects you know it's yeah. like hey can i get this for that and there's my plans and we're gonna invite these people over here content creators already work for themselves they're on their grind set chuck some money at them we'll make this game pop it, it, they're so close to doing that already yeah they could definitely spend more money on that stuff for sure on well the they lot. don't spend any money on it i'm just saying like that that could be the future right mm -hmm. imagine if soup was funded to make Gilinor games you know imagine if he could pay someone for animations that are even higher tier like his are already high tier he spends money right but what if he got like professional artists right to make these crazy series i swear games pop because one or two people make this beautifully cinematic series i mean if you guys heard of frankie on on 1080 pc he made arma pop Right, he's he's a main contributor. Why that game popped? Because he do these story based modes and all, he get a server and spawns. Why can't RuneScape do that? We already have the community. We already have the drive. Just give a couple more servers. Jesus, that's some hair. Uh, <laughs> holy <laughs> damn, boy! Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, let me. Actual main of a lion. Really, really I know. I lost lion. my point. I lost my point, but just chuck yeah, more money yeah, at him. Yeah. And we'll do fine. That's all. Thank I'm God saying. it's not November anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I would have lost instantly. Yeah. Dude, what do you guys feel? like as content creators, boys? Like, how do you guys feel if Jagex were to be like, "Hey, we're gonna set up like new member affiliate program where you know you can see how many people are playing the game through your link, and you're gonna get like a, a cut of the people who sign up for membership." As content creators for RuneScape, how do you guys feel about it? The thing is, like, it's very hard to get new paying subscriptions for the game. Like, most people that play this game are just people that have always played it. So getting new players is already very difficult. Mm -hmm. But it'd be nice to, like, that's have something there. With. Like, let's say, hey, you get, like, you know, five new people to play a month. Hey, that's, I guess, five bucks in your pocket or something, whatever percentage they want to pay for it. It's just something there. It's, like, an added incentive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't hurt, you know? It doesn't hurt. Do you think it would be an issue to make it so it's like whether it be new people or reoccurring members because like you could always argue you know the reason why they've continued playing is because of your content problem is like i mean i guess you could do it like on already pre-existing memberships but i feel like it would just be a way to milk jagex because the way they see it is like if they're going to play the game from watching you or from playing the game they're going to play it anyway like no referral link is going to make that any better and yeah. I don't think, like, let's say lowering the price of the month's membership by, like, a dollar or something like that for the person mm -hmm. paying for it is really going to entice them. Like, yeah, sure, I'll torture myself for another month or something. Mm. I don't think it's going to yeah, make I... any make or break someone's decision to play the game for an extra month. So I don't see any reason for them to do that kind of thing. It'd be nice if they did, but they probably won't. Yeah. 
I, I guess. I mean, I'm just down if they can, you know, like invite us to play things, you know, kind of like do those kind of stuff more often, right? Honestly, or yeah. help us. It's, uh, I don't know, like pitch an idea and they they can fund you or something, you know. That th those are cooler, I think. Those are more like, you know, more realistic in a way. Yeah, yeah the referral based thing. Honestly, it wouldn't be bad getting more money into the content creators' pockets, but overall, will it bring a lot of more people in the game? Probably not. I'd be for it, but I think the best way for them to grow without getting a new console, a new platform, is kind of like what Rice said and stuff. Just, just invite, have more events, have, yeah. have more things happen, spend more money on not just advertising on Facebook, right? You're not trying to get grandma to sign up. Give money to the people who know how to advertise, because at the end of the day, that's all it is, dude. League of Legends got Tyler one screaming, bro. Who we got? Oda Block. They don't send no money his way. Take Oda Block shirt off, throw him down a highway, have him scream and play RuneScape, and you'll get tons of players, dude. It's that easy. It's honestly like they're thinking we're gonna go make these really semi all right ads and just chuck them on Facebook, and we're gonna get players because that's been working for years. No, just just give money to people already promoting the game, bro. That's it. Just give them opportunities. They already have the ideas. Bro, fun. they they could literally do so much. Like, you know, mm -hmm. going back probably four years from now when they did like the Deadman Mansions, like the amount of potential that had was just unbelievable. Seriously. And I've spoken about it after as well. I remember this is a J mod which is left now, but at the time he was in charge of a lot of like the event funding and stuff. And he said that there was an idea that was going around. They were talking about dead man castles. Or yeah, they were going to have, like, <laughs> double the amount of content creators in a castle all playing demo mode for the week and have it... Basically, it was supposed to be, like, it was supposed to be recorded, like, you guys know what Big Brother is? You ever seen that? Like, kind, of, yeah, yeah, kind, kind of, kind of it, yeah, kind of. It was supposed It was supposed to be like that, but it was just that basically, no discredit at all, Chris Archie did an amazing job. They had Chris Archie running the whole thing. This man was solo two mansions and like our mansion didn't even have good internet like we had to take turns streaming that's how scuffed it was because they had one person that was doing everything and like chris worked his ass off but unfortunately it just there was just not enough manpower there to fix the issues but like the potential that that had was huge and like they could do events like that if they wanted to every couple of months you know if they yeah they, they definitely have the budget and it definitely brings in the views when they see loads of content creators together mm -hmm. you know people love it it's kind of similar with like the podcast people enjoy the podcast and i feel like an aspect of that is because they've got all of these content creators in one place and they can come here and like hear our opinions or whatever we're talking about you know like it definitely is in my opinion a better way of advertising although i will say here in the UK, I know it's different over in America, but here in the UK, for the last two years, we've basically been on lockdown, and things have been a bit weird. So, like, trying to arrange something like that would just be a no-go, especially having you boys coming over from America. You have to, like, quarantine for two weeks in a hotel, and then go to the event. It's just, it wouldn't have happened in the mm -hmm. last two years. But hopefully when everything settles down, maybe they'll start doing stuff like that again. So I think yeah. that'd be great. Yeah, those those why, events. Uh, oh, sorry. Go, Cole. Yeah. I was gonna say that's why, like, me and my family had a planned vacation to go to the UK for Christmas because, I mean, I don't think any of you know. Maybe Rice knows. I uh, I have a niece now. My brother is now a father as of a few months ago. Congrats, man! Hey, geez, geez, and man. we still have part of our uh, our upper generation. My grandfather's still alive, so we're hoping maybe he could meet his new great granddaughter. But yeah, complications with travel in the UK is a uh, is a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big. Yeah. yeah, those travel restrictions are definitely ass for everyone. Um, but speaking about the demo and mansions and, and everything, I honestly super jealous that everyone got to be a part of that. But from what I heard, it was hype, but it was definitely a struggle. And just kind of going back to the whole give content creators more power, more funding. If you let someone just like just gave them some funding and they planned it and they got like first off, a content creator is gonna have good internet. They're gonna when we go to TwitchCon, we get a cheap B and B. We make it work, right? They're they're having RuneScape people, JMods, try to plan this while they're trying to do all this stuff. Hell, just just ask for a plan, fund it, and see how it goes, man. I'm thinking like we could have monthly tournaments. We could fly people around. The funding they've been using on these ads is just atrocious. They could be spending this money so much. 
Could you imagine if they sent Sir Puggers to Venezuela and did like a, 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 a prior rail report, right? Like plotting and re- dude, no, for it's real. Okay, though. But it's good. It's true. Yeah, he's, he's right though. He's onto something. Yeah, no, I mean, and it, it wouldn't it would cost, go viral, dude. It would go straight viral. It wouldn't cost any money. It would what a couple thousand to fly him there in a housing in Venezuela, and he'd have to be down, of course. But we're talking he like he could do that himself as well, man. Like that's oh. a good idea for Pugger. <laughs> Pugger, there's so many content creators that have niches, like um. I'm not sure Pugger, but oh god, I can't think of the other one. Um, who 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 fights the bots, or is that Pugger? There's another bot guy, right? Uh, I can't uh, think of. You? I don't know. Nah, he fights the underworld now. No, yeah, dude, <laughs> Kim Q. Um, he honestly does. You could what have all do? these. Like Kim Q to a scammer's house. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we could we could do things though. That's what. Yeah, that's the thing. You the could fund. <laughs> Imagine if they funded like a clan to just like wipe out all other clans and you re- recorded it and then just I don't know, bro. The ideas and the niche content, all these creators, because all these creators already have content that made them blow up, right? Going to some scammers or modders and they see what's wrong and they, they do these in-depth reports and you're like, How is this even RuneScape content? This is crazy content coming from a, 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 a game that runs off Java or used to, right? How how do we have such crazy content? Fund their fund their ideas, fund their adventures. Odoblock could host a PvP tournament every month, and it, you would gain so much money even if you had to pay the guy, right? Just monthly. That could be the content. Tournaments, rank tiers, everywhere. They, you could do that with high-end PV, uh, PVM, too. I'm sure a cold one, if you gave him some funding, he could do a tournament somehow. He'd think of something, man. Next guy to solo it or whatever. I, there's just there's so many ideas to create an audience for RuneScape, and it has nothing to do with Facebook ads. That's all I wanted to say, dude. There's just there's just so yeah. much. True. Yeah. I know it's another topic you guys wanted to cover, not to take away from this, but you guys wanted to go over the Rev boss as well, like that new release and the changes to Rev caves that have happened recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's a mint so, thing right there. Well, there, there's a beta going on right now, and I have I have it open. So they are changing the PJ timer. For those unfamiliar, this mechanic is a grace period of 16 cycles, about 10 seconds, that begins when a player attacks something and it prevents them from being hit. Uh, With this beta, this PJ timer will be active in single and single plus areas in the wild. Won't be able to attack them for 16 cycles, so 10 second grace period again. And, uh, you know, some things that might have, that were already added, we're tired of cold one after, but just the statum is that you can catch, uh, you can't catch Chin Chop as well in combat. So if you're getting attacked by, uh, by a person, you're rip, dark, uh, dark crabs and mining. So they're adding that all over the wild. I haven't tested it. What do you guys think about the PGA timer, singles and singles plus? 10 so, seconds. Before we like just jump into it, something I tweeted the other day, um, Firstly, the fact that they are actually testing game changer mechanics in beta worlds before it goes into the live game, I feel like regardless of what we think of the actual update itself, I applaud Jagex for doing that. Because I feel like they've actually listened to feedback there. Because we've said it tons of times, like before these big updates come into the game, if it's something game changing or mechanical that's changing in the game, it needs to be tested not only by the JMods, but by the players, because it could be absolutely, like, terrible. So the fact that they've even allowed us, like, to properly test this in beta worlds, which people can do right now, I got to applaud them for that. I think that's 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 good. So, yeah, beta worlds should always be the first step in any update. That's, yeah, that's a really good step. And, um, I you know, I saw that, and that was the first thing I thought. I was like, good on them. Like, they're actually listening to feedback, and that's a good sign. Ten seconds. Um, but in, in terms of the actual update itself, uh, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know what it entails. That's it. Maybe one of you have. Yeah, it's just uh, yes. test out uh, 10 seconds, right? What yeah, 10 second PJ timer. It's going to be in singles and single plus. Okay, so it's basically just single plus everywhere then. Pretty much. Pretty well, much. Were they yeah. talking about doing this like months ago and we covered it and then they decided not to do it? Or well, not people. People got mad because they said it ruined Peking, and then other people said it'd be great and better. And I don't know. It was just, I'm not even sure how that whole conversation went down, but I guess they're circling right back to it with a beta. It's bad for singles clans, and it's good for everybody else. Yep. Yeah. I think it's good for me because <laughs> I'm not going to get hit by some random AGS Andy, you know, that wasn't attacking me prior. Right. This, this might be something that works 
around the board is that anything bad for single clans is probably good for everyone else pretty much just anything yeah anything yeah. that makes them less powerful or less useful is better for the wild in total and sadly the people in single clans can't wrap their mind around that they are so defensive they're so against it but i mean if they just think outside that clan it's honestly just any update that makes you guys less powerful it's gonna make yeah, the wilderness I'll, better i'll be honest man like i think that i know they're probably gonna complain about it because it's gonna make at they have an they have for a single clan they're gonna be they're gonna be annoyed about this but here's the thing if this incentivizes more people and let's for the sake of the single clans, call them whales, who are going to risk their banks in deep building because they feel safe because of the single plus thing, it's probably going to benefit the single clans more than they already know. Because, like, you know, like, here's the thing. There's a 10-second PJ time. It, it's like the average person doesn't know exactly how that mechanic works. So, for example, if you don't know in single plus, it's like if you want to log out from your opponent in the Rev Cave, you not only have to snare them and get away from them to the point where they can't attack you, but you also need to be the person who deals the last hit. And if you don't do that, you're going to get PJ'd and you're not going to be able to log out. And like, that's just a nugget of information that I imagine like not everybody's going to know. And that's definitely going to benefit single clans, especially if there's more people risking more in the wildy because of this update. Like that's not a bad thing at all. And on the other end of it, if you are a good PKer and you know how to fight back, it's like, this gives you that chance to do so. And if you understand those mechanics, you can literally have the same advantage as a solo player, theoretically, as being in a clan without the security, I guess. So yeah, I I think it's a good update. I think yeah. single, single teams will probably come around to it after a while. Yeah, they're just going to have to suck it up, pretty much. Well, the thing is, we don't need single teams to suck it up or come around. They could just leave. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I know I'm probably going to get hunted. But what do you, you guys are. do? What, what do you guys thing? do? You're, you're already hunted. What's I'm already hunted. hunted. But already the thing hunted. is, honestly, if you go PK and you're taking someone life, you're grabbing, you're not bringing anything to the wild other than just excitement. But when you have this many people on one person and that's always repeatable, always going to happen, what you're adding no value to the wild and you're actually extracting value, which is probably your whole point, right? You want to make money. But at the end of the day, if you can make more money just doing Zora, like all of you guys do Zora, and you can make like 10, 20x more money, especially with all your scout bots relaying you information, then honestly, you're just extracting value without gaining a lot. Uh, so it, it, single clans can suck it up or not. The thing is, you don't bring value into the wild. You don't make it better. If anything, you might make it worse, especially when you bring that uh, extra flair onto Twitter after you get a kill every time, bro. We're talking like, They'll post like a 10 mil kill of 40 dudes on one guy and then they'll upload it. And then they'll... It's no value whatsoever, man. I don't yeah, know. What I think of single clans. Same 20 people retweeting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll start doxing and stuff. Uh, but I do have to say, though, Rakes, when we were talking about that gap where you need to tack them back and then run around to log out or teleport, I actually I feel like I might be the only PKer to say I actually hate that. I feel like the gap to where you can escape on somebody has to be so perfect yeah. that um, it's honestly, it doesn't even feel like a 1v1 interaction at that point. Because if they have another pal, they're just mass clicking on you. When in single yeah. plus, it should be a 1v1. You should outplay the opponent, not his team. So I, I kind of hate that gap. And if it's going to be everywhere in the wild, then yeah, single clans are going to definitely prosper from that, even when I don't want them to. So I don't yeah. know. Man. Yeah, but it should help though. It should help. Really, just I mean, make it more doing, fair. Is adding like two extra game cycles onto the uh, the logout delay, so it's ten point eight seconds. I think it'll go to, so it's a bit like more lenient with you being able to get out. If like you know a single clan just happens to log in, you hit the guy free, stand under him. You've got a lot longer of a window now. Like I hope so. A lot, because that whole just it's too close. It's too tight knit. Um, uh, and talking about like single plus and the PJ timer all around the wild, it's not going to make it more active. Just because you can go out there and be a little more risky doesn't mean people are going to go out there and be a little more. They might test it out the first day or two, but there's no reason to go in the wild right now other than reps. Everything's been grinded. And Sorry, what are you saying? I was going to say, there's another thing that wasn't really brought up, or maybe it has been. Uh, the ability to just have an alt account constantly box you to travel through the wilderness just doing whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Whether it be that... like going to KBD or going to do a blue step. <laughs> yeah. boxing you with like flowers well, or something then no one else can attack you or the boxer that's, that's a nice. very 
interesting point. Yeah, because yeah, these yeah, game true. mechanics are effectively what the PvP, no PJ game mechanics are. And in Dead Mummo, they specifically have the rule that you can't box. So that's a really, really valid point there because that's not good at all. That completely like defeats the purpose of the wilderness. If you've just got somebody being boxed all the way through it, and players now have priority over aggressive monsters as well, like that for sure isn't a good thing, and that's something they're going to have to address. Yeah, isn't there? Um, I remember for like every season of Dead Man mode from like season six and onward, maybe seven and onward, there was a mechanic where if neither you nor your opponent did any noteworthy damage over the past like thirty seconds, someone could PJ it. They could just yeah. copy paste that into it, and it's fine. That would be and really good abusable. because I think. Realistically, if they have the rule of boxings against the game, they don't have the manpower to be able to like rule that and ban accounts and stuff. And that's a enforce that, way yeah. to do it. But mm -hmm. that mechanic you're talking about is really good. It's like if you hit so many zeros in a row or like low numbers, people can PJ. Uh, so I think that would actually be a really good a good way of balancing it. To be fair, I hope they've been working on something better though. Like I really hope they are working on a much better boxing mechanic. Because sure, it was a solution, but at the same time, it wasn't a great solution, right? It yeah. wasn't. It, you, you still had boxers, and then people got disqualified, and it honestly didn't fix much unless they were watching you. And there's no way they're going to be watching everyone in the wild. So I'm hoping. I don't yeah. know what it could be, but it's got to be a good mechanic so people can't just box all the time. It can't. It can't just be the old one from Dead Man mode. That's not going to work either. It's it's still pretty trash because you can just do a little more damage. You're good. You know, imagine well, like nine thousand dollar prize pool they don't really need to moderate it like that it's well yeah i mean that's the best one they got so far so i mean they can go with that i don't know or make but it still, severe enough you know if it doesn't meet like a high enough threshold you know so i guess yeah the the beta coming out there are a couple flaws and uh hopefully those flaws will be patched but still the biggest flaw of the wild is uh content Right now, all you have is revs, and then maybe if you need to grind something that you don't have yet on Iron Man or get your cape, that's what the yeah. wild is, and sometimes clues. So they're I yeah. won't say revs did right now though. Revs actually got revived by the changes really well. There are people out there. Yeah, it's really packed at least, I guess. I think it was I've... like you know, last night or the night before. Somebody like gave me like a bit challenge where he's like, go hit like a number on somebody in the wild, and whatever you hit, I'll match it by a hundred bits per hit. So naturally, you know me, I went and grabbed a full DH set out of the bank. And like a bunch of them just like hit their friends like a level one or something. I just went right to the rev case. I'm like, there's bound to be people here. And sure enough, I went in there. There was people. There was yep. people all over the place. I saw some guy at 107 combat. I'm in level 19 wilderness. Like, perfect. I can just hit him. I'm at one HP with Darok. I see him throwing with the Benjamin. Like, I don't care. Let's see what I hit and just whack a 78 and get myself killed. <laughs> Nice. I do the I mean, same. They, do. Worth, they are bloating the rev boss, huh. which is worth noting. Um, yeah, I that mean, too. hopefully that's hopefully that's gonna bring more attention to the rev caves. But I will say something that I have gone on for about for ages. I probably sound like a fucking beaten record at this point, but like, where are the PvP mini games? Okay, like I talk about this all the time, dude. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I have this vision in my mind for RuneScape when it comes to PvP. Or maybe it's a past vision of how it used to be. But, like, there just isn't enough incentive, I don't feel, or fun things for people to do that's PvP-related. And, like, you can argue, like, oh, we got Soul Wars and we've got Castle Wars, but Castle Wars is so old that it's, like, after playing the same thing for 20 years, you want to get something new. And Soul Wars yep. is primarily used as a fun now for Iron Men to get resources and also pet hunters. But, like, they, I just... I feel like there needs to be more PvP mini games, like things that people can just get into. Because one thing's for sure, it's been spoken about by the J mods themselves, that having a PvP mini game where there is no risk involved works, and people enjoy that, and it gets people into it. And I'm specifically talking about LMS. There's no risk, it's but people perfect. are really into it, right? Well, it's got flaws, but it's great, and I still love yeah. playing it. I can do it mm -hmm. on any account. I can just, like, go get a Brid fight anytime I want. Occasionally, we get a bot, and we just, like, you know, slap him real quick. Yeah, but, every, and, like, every... it, it's a proven formula for a successful PvP game. And Jagex could 100%, if they wanted to, put the resources into making some, like, really well-made PvP minigames where people can get involved and people might really enjoy it, you know? It's like, I feel like Last Man Standing is almost like a skeleton of what it could be. Like, if they really built upon it, they could have, like, you know, a monthly rotating 
like different loot systems that come from the chest. They can have different account builds. They could do it so it's like a yes. two of you go in and you fight two mans and stuff, but it's just not there, you know? Like Zerk build LMS, pure build LMS, med level LMS, dude. I would fucking love that. I would eat that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like just sprinkling that bit of variety would be huge, you know? It, it's like for the longest time. I remember I moaned about this for like a year on the podcast. I was like, man, those loot chests that you get that randomly come down from the sky that has a VLS in. And it's like a brown crate that everybody misses. And then now they've replaced it with an epic chest. And it's like, oh, damn. Like, just little things like that. Like, they just add so much. And it's only a small little thing. And it probably took someone, like, I don't know how long it takes to do shit like that. I'll be honest. But I imagine it probably maybe took an hour tops of someone's, like, playing fucking Pokemon Go at the same time. Like, it, I doubt it would have taken that much time to put that in the game. But, like, you know. I digress. I think that more PvP mini games would be really good for the game. And just general interest in PvP as a whole. And like here here's the other thing. Like the game changes, man. Time goes on. Things change. Like maybe the direction of PvP and the future for RuneScape, we're so stuck in our ways of like it needs to be the wilderness, it needs to be full loot PvP and so forth. It's like maybe we could have some other alteration of what PvP could be, and maybe it would suit and fit a lot better with today's player base, where they enjoy it significantly more. Because unlike everything else in the game, they don't have to lose all of their shit to be able to get involved with that activity. Like, that's kind of a thing that we've spoken about loads of times. It's like, why don't we just work with that and make it so it's a game where you don't risk anything apart from your own time? Like, that's the investment that you lose is your time if you lose, instead of your items. I don't know. I see your chat talking about steel and creation right now. That's something that I'd like to see in the game, and I'm sure a million other people would love to see it in there. And I see them talking about how the rewards are overpowered. Just tweak the numbers on it, so it's not like best for EXP per hour. It just like it's like a little worse than if you were to do that activity for skilling for the amount of time that's spent in the game and the amount yeah. of XP you get out of it. It's just the game was fun. A lot of people Dude, enjoyed it. I, that's a that's a really good point about what, being able to tweak the XP from it. And it kind of, it kind of reminds me a little bit of um. Dale Essence. So the Essence that you get from Darkmare, right? It's like, if you're gonna do Lava Runes or ZMI, I'll give you my example. I do Lava Runes. I need to get 77 Rune Crafting, and instead of just like no life in it through doing pure Essence and just hating myself, half of the time I spent AFK mining to break up the monotonous grinds. And, and, then you, I was getting a, and then I was getting 100k XP an hour minimum when doing Lava Runes. And like, even though over that period of time, it took me longer to get 77. I felt so much better about it than just doing 77 with just pure essence. You know? And it's like, I, I think that's a good point. I think it's nice to have a variety of doing, like, intense gaming such as, like, lava runes or whatever and then, like, a chill part where you're just, like, mining away at Dale Essence and you can chill and turn your brain off. Like, that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah, Dale was it, really nice. It surprises me that pure LMS... And Zerk LMS has not. How hard is that? You get like a, a gear set and then like a, a stats and you just drop them. Why has that not been added? But my biggest problem with, uh, you know, LMS and those PvP games, and I, I do enjoy that people are getting in the PvP and uh, maybe they will go in the wild one day from that experience. Damn, I can't play LMS, dude. The pain, bro. Every time. Yeah. I don't know if it's just me. But I can't actually do real switches in LMS. I can't do combos. It's honestly just almost feels like 50% RNG, 50% yep. AHK. We've made suggestions and... so far to like <laughs> split it. Just have a US and a UK. Yeah, they really the have to do time, that. Honestly, that's the problem right now. It's got a spike in popularity because group Iron Men need rewards from LMS. They need rune pouches. They need rune arrows and stuff. Yeah. So if you look at the world right now, there's like a thousand people on it. Yeah, it's, it's so like, light. It's stupid lag. Like yeah, if it's a RuneScape world that's over 500 people, like it just doesn't operate. It's not good. Yeah, they need to have two worlds at all times, Dude, like straight seriously. Real like random tangent thing right now, but that whole conversation, right? So recently, I played a game called Albion Online, and I will say I was sponsored to play it, but I was genuinely blown away by the amount of numbers because they have one server. Doesn't matter if you're American. Doesn't matter if you're from the UK. Doesn't matter if you're from Russia. You're on one server, and apparently last summer they had over 270,000 players on one server with no lag. Just like running smoothly. 270,000 players. That shit 
blew my mind. That's insane. That's going to be the future of gaming, bro. Like, I don't want to talk about blockchain because obviously it's a hot topic, but when blockchain hits gaming, you're going to be able to have those kind of servers with instant, instant thing. Like, you cast a spell, it's like on a block, instant. Like, you could see it. The dimensions are there. Uh, it's just perfect. There's, there's no, there, there would be like very little lag, if any. Like, that's, that's where we're going. Um, the tree pictures on the blockchain. Beautiful. <laughs> that's, I'll buy it. Um, <laughs> 73 yeah, now. Before, <laughs> easy. But before we even like start updating these PvP games, yeah, just fix the servers, man. Just honestly, it's the that's, biggest deal. That's that's a really interesting conversation because I talked to my chat about it. This is a conversation I've had recently where I'm just like, if a game which is in like a similar category, like Albion Online, is very similar to RuneScape. If they can have over two hundred thousand players on one server with no lag issues, why is it that on RuneScape, if you have over five hundred players on a world, it's borderline unplayable? And I don't know enough about this. Like, I don't know if the servers are even remotely connected or alike. I don't know if it's like chalk and cheese or if it is similar. But like, do you guys have any information on these servers and like why that's the case? Mm. Or anybody in the comments, like I, I would truly love to know, like what's going on with that. Rakesy, how'd you put that? Like, what if some like what if RuneScape? How'd you put that again? What if Rune? <sighs> what? It was like uh, if Albion can do this, why can't RuneScape do that? I was gonna say that that the the verse you just said, why can't RuneScape do that, is legit the question I get asked every day, and just I'm thinking really? about why can't they do this? Why can't they do that? It's you could say that for everything, not just like the servers, but why can't they fix people? I don't know, man. Comparing it to other games, Dude. there's just so many what ifs and whys. It's like why they got they they not? just don't got funding, I guess, for a Seriously, lot of these man. things, dude. There's yeah, no way like... Albion Online is making I... more than RuneScape. Yeah, I feel I like the investors know. are are forcing their hands on how much they're giving. You know, like they're not they're not giving out that much. You know, to provide for the game like that, they're just extracting money and then selling the game kind of deal right now. So. Mm-hmm. Well, the, and the we can't touch those. Is, we can't touch those guys. Unfortunately, they don't show themselves. You know. The sad truth about well, old for RuneScape, when you think about it, right, is that the game gets passed around. Like it's it sold to like mining companies from China and stuff like that. Like basically, and I'm no genius or expert on this fact, but it. So the Gower brothers made the game. Imagine the Gower brothers are like the loving parent that look after its child, which is RuneScape, and then they sold it. And now it just gets tossed around. And like no company is really there aside from the money. And hey, that's what companies do, man. They make money. It is what it is. But it's like there is one thing I will say, okay? And I really do appreciate what the J mods do for our game. And I see this all the time where people like criticize Jagex for doing something and they're like, oh, but you know, not the J mods and so forth, which to a degree I agree with. But it's literally been stated by the J mods, by Mod Aiza, by Mod Sween when he was there. They do have a say on what gets worked on in our game. Okay. Basically, the job of like say Mod Sween recently before he left was to try and make the company the best money. The people, the overlords, the people that are, you know, own the biggest share in the company, entrust the leaders of the old school team to make the right decisions in order to get the best profits and money. For them and do the best for the game so to say that they have absolutely no part to play in what what updates come into the game is disingenuous it's not true because they do they just realize that working on pvp it like they ain't gonna get a promotion do you know what i mean or they're not gonna stay there for long if they're working on pvp because less than five percent of the player base bloody do it it would be like the silliest business decision ever but like they could, if they wanted to, work on PvP. They could. And that's no hate to any of the JMods. I appreciate what you guys are doing, and I understand why you make the decisions you do. But it's like, here's the thing. Until every person in the old school RuneScape community starts, like, Pepe rioting with there being no PvP updates, there aren't going to be PvP updates. Until people want it, and it's, like, a movement of such, and everybody's talking about it, like, similar to, like, the uh, 117 HD client add-on that he had, until everybody's up in roars about it and everyone's outraged, it's not happening. That's just the absolute reality of it. 
and i know it sounds a bit nasty and it sounds a bit bitter but like that's just how it is True like, though. that's it it really is um so yeah i don't know the thing is you you see all these hype things happening for runescape and like most of the hype things happening aren't even runescapes doing it's more of like like the hd client for an example that almost didn't come in the game and that is so hype and that was not made by runescape at all they had no part in that they should have no credit that was a fan-made thing and it finally came in the game and that was pretty hype right what's with all this stuff happening to runescape that runescape doesn't even add it it's it's so weird that over half of of the hype of runescape isn't even added from jagex it's just so weird it's just so weird dude i agree they need yeah all right uh boys i think i don't know how long this podcast has been going two hours two hours perfect uh i think we wrap it up there a cold one thank you very much for coming on the podcast today it's been an utmost pleasure is there any social medias or anyone that you'd like to shout out on the podcast, my friends? Oh, no, the pleasure's been all mine. Thank you again for having me on. Um, it's just my name, a cold one, behind Twitch, so twitch.tv slash a cold one. And then there's Twitter, which is, I think, OSRS underscore cold one. I'm sure there'll be links in the channel description as well. Yeah, we'll yes. link you. We'll get you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome talking to you, man. Yeah, I'm all sure right. Rakes, he's probably got a roast in the oven that he's got to tend to. Mm-hmm. Nate, do you know what's... Nate, I've just...